Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to another Saturday morning 3D live stream. Thank you all so much for joining me. I wasn't here last week. I was taking a break. I was in Virginia at Camp MoGraph, chilling with other VFX artists, 3D artists, no computers. We just had the beach, we had kayaks. It was a beautiful, beautiful time. I feel well rested. I feel ready to go for this stream. So what are we doing today? What are we doing today on this live stream? So as a lot of you probably already know, I hosted the fifth 3D community challenge a couple weeks ago. Um, August was our working month and I challenged 3D artists to create the coolest Tai Chi inspired render uh, given some provided animations and uh, a certain 3D prompt, right? We put them all together. We put together this incredible top 100 montage. There's an all renders montage, 3,600 artists, I believe, submitted to it with 24 years of communal work. But we're talking the top 100, but specifically the top five today. The artists who won this challenge are some incredible artists. Um, they're very young artists. They're artists from around the world. Um, so I'm very, very excited to bring each one of them on today and talk with them about their, their workflows and how they created their incredible renders that won them this challenge out of 3,600 people, only five truly, you know, well, I mean, we're all winners. Hey, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we're all winners. We all put the work in, we all did some cool stuff over that month. Um, but these top five are incredible. You guys will see, you've probably seen them. Um, if you hadn't, Buckle up, there's some really cool renders. We're talking workflows. We're gonna talk about what inspired them to get started in 3D, how they learned. Um, and the cool thing about this is each one of them have different answers to these questions. So I hope that you guys can take all of their knowledge and apply it to yourself and learn something from each one of these incredible artists that we're gonna bring on and talk to today. We're gonna do about 30 minutes which eat with each one. Um, and we're gonna do a, a weekly challenge review and I'll announce the winners for this weekly challenge that we're doing. We're always doing challenges. We're always trying to push ourselves. Um, if you guys aren't part of the Discord, definitely click the link below. It's in the description. Join the Discord, get on the weekly challenges. Um, but before we bring on our first guest, um, our second place winner, um, we got a little word from the sponsors today because you know that's how I keep these things going That's how I keep this channel up and running. So I thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience I'm glad y'all are here grab a drink buckle up. It's gonna be a good time uh, Two minutes word from the sponsor and I'll see you guys back with our first guest. All right. All right. See you soon Today's sponsor is an interesting one, but a very important one for men out there experiencing hair loss. Two out of three men will experience male pattern baldness by the age of 35. And signs of hair loss can creep in as early as 20. Unfortunately, it is a thing that most of us will have to deal with. But lucky for us, Keeps is the sponsor of today's video. Keeps is a subscription-based service that helps men keep their hair. Their treatments are clinically proven and research-backed, of course, and delivered straight to your door at about half the price of a traditional pharmacy. Each personalized treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging and individual support from keeps this vast network of expert medical advisors prescribers and care specialists who will help you select the right product for your specific situation keeps also offers an award-winning all-natural shampoo and conditioner to keep your head fresh on the daily so whether you're looking to prevent hair loss stimulate hair growth or just take better care of the hair that you have keeps has got you covered to get 50% off your first order go to keeps.com slash Punisher, that is K-E-E-P-S dot com slash P-W-N-I-S-H-E-R. Yo, what is hey, what's up? up? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. What about you? Oh, I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. It's a good time. We got your beautiful I, art playing here, crushing it. I can't believe that I'm here, like, with Punisher, the, the Punisher. Like, <laughs> that's the Punisher. The YouTube, YouTube legend. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was funny, man. One time we were playing Airsoft and like it was me, Sam and Nico and we were like loading out our gear and stuff. And uh, there was these little kids like off to the right in the other corner of this like staging room. And 
they start, they were like whispering amongst themselves. And I was like, oh, excuse me to one of the kids. Cause I was like moving by. And his friend was like, that's the Punisher you're talking to. <laughs> I was like, did he just say that? What the heck? That's <laughs> so weird. Uh, anyway, man, we're, we're here easy. about you today, man. Um, can you introduce yourself and where, where are you from as well? Okay. So my name is Shuparno. Uh, my actual name, like my actual name is Shuparno, but my nickname is Zeus. Uh, actually, the Zeus name comes from uh, the game Age of Mythology, if you have played it. Uh, I really love that game. Like I used to play it with the god Zeus all the time. So I just uh, inherited that name from him, I guess. <laughs> and uh, okay, so I am from Kolkata. Uh, Kolkata, West Bengal, India. So it's uh, called the city of joy, basically. It's a lovely city uh, in the eastern part of India. And there, the, I was, I have been whole, my, there my whole life. So, uh, and now I'm just uh, creating 3D art, you know. But, uh, so my journey, right? So I actually am an engineer. So I'm an IT engineer. Uh, I actually uh, studied bachelor's in information technology. And after that, I actually got a job as well. But uh, I actually did not take the job. I thought that taking up a job would just mean like ending my creativity, to be honest. Oh, man. Okay, so that's uh, huge right yeah. there. How, so how many years did you go to school? Uh, so uh, I, uh, so 12th, so class 12th. So basically 15 years right there. Oh. And then after that, uh, <laughs> I had four years of uh, college. So, oh, boy. Yeah. Okay, so about, so... 19, about 19 to 20 years, yeah. Oh my That's god, cool. how old are you? <laughs> I'm 26. Okay, okay. What yeah. did your parents think? Like, what, what did you have to tell your parents? Were they cool with that? Like, I'm sure, you know, that's tough. I'm sure a lot so of people relate time, to you as well right now. So yeah, it's a fun story. Like, I was actually gaming during my college years. So about four years, I uh, used to game a lot. And I really became good at one game in particular. So that was Dota 2. Oh, I know yeah. one of the mods also played, uh, also plays uh, MDK. He plays Dota, Dota 2. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so yeah, I actually became like, uh, you can say a professional literally, because I used to just play uh, that game all day long during Shoot. my college years. Okay. Okay. And so I uh, reached around top 300 in Southeast Asia in that game. Dang. And then... Uh, I I like I already participated in a lot of tournaments during the years like 2015 to 2018, and when I graduated from college, I thought that why not try and pursue this this as a career. Hmm. So I uh, tried competitive gaming as a career, you know, for about two years, I guess. Yeah. What, what did your and, uh, what, what did yeah, your family I, think of I this? Used... Like, were they supportive of you, or were they like, eh? Uh, my brother was really supportive. That's why I could continue. Otherwise, it was not possible. Like they were absolutely not uh, with it at all. They were totally against it. You know, India, you just uh, become an engineer or doctor first, and mm -hmm. then you decide what to do with life. <laughs> That's the first step. It's like first you got to be a doctor or an engineer, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's crazy. So, so yeah. you you know, it's I think it's similar. A lot of us 3D artists are into are are gamers ourselves, um, myself included. Yes. I, I have loved games ever since. I think my the first time I touched a game was the Game Boy Color. Uh, I remember like in church, Hello. one of the one of the kids had a Game Boy Color, and I was like, oh, and then I think I got one like close to that point, and I just remember playing like Army Men games and. Uh, Mario Kart and eventually got PlayStation 1 and of course it went all the way to the point you know we're at PlayStation 5 now which is insane but uh, yeah a lot of the inspiration comes so I, from games too yeah I also wanted a Game Boy but yeah I uh, couldn't afford it at that point and my parents didn't want to give it to me so yeah I just for had sure. to settle for a PC I didn't really get a console anytime so all my life I have been a PC gamer that's awesome yeah same my dad like he would he one of his hobbies was building computers and stuff and he kind of taught me a little bit about it um so we always had like he was always gaming in the house and stuff and what, what's cool is like when you have a pretty decent pc for games that means you kind of have a decent pc for 3d you know yeah exactly they go yeah. hand in hand 
Um, so I gotta ask, all right, this, what the art we're looking at right here, right? We did this challenge in August. You had a month to create this. Um, how long had you been working in 3D before uh, this art we're seeing right here? Oh. Yeah, so I actually started 3D around uh, December 2020. So that's the first time I've opened up Blender. That's the first program I opened up in 3D. So fun story is that uh, I wouldn't have opened up 3D, but uh, in around December, my previous PC, that is a GTX 1070 PC, that actually broke down. So I had to get a new one. So I thought, you know, uh, there's the new latest generation 3000 series cards, and let's just get the 3080. I just told my brother, maybe let's just try to uh, source it, finance it somehow and yeah. get it. Uh, so just for playing games, honestly, just yeah. for playing games. Uh, and then I uh, got it. And then uh, suddenly I saw that there is a thing called 3D. I was actually doing some Photoshop work at that time, like photo manipulation. Mm -hmm. And then I was having a lot of trouble with uh, finding good source photos to use uh, for my photo manipulations. And I thought, let's just try 3D and maybe I can make my own assets and use them for photo manipulation. So that's where I really started. I started with the Blender Guru Donut tutorial. Oh Donut man, one. that's the, that's so many people. That's, that's a classic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I finished it around a week, in around a week. And then I got so tired of Blender. I was like, okay, that's it. Uh, I'm totally burnt out. Let's just go back to Photoshop with my old ways. And yeah, uh, I just gave oh, up I on 3D you. for about a month. I can't hear you. Yeah, hello? Yeah, yeah, I got you. You're here, right? Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you so, got, you got uh, burnt out from Blender. Yeah, yeah, I got burned out totally, and then I took a month break. So the break was uh, literally me working in Photoshop, just making photo manipulation images, artworks like that. Yeah, they were really bad. You can even see them right now if you go down my Instagram posts. They're still there. I don't want to remove them actually. I just want <laughs> no, to you gotta remember where you came from. Yeah, you gotta remember where you came from. Yeah. Um, yeah. So two things. And then February, I just uh, you know, okay. What? what are you I was gonna say that um, if for for those of you who want to follow um, uh, Shporno's work, it is linked in the description. I think I got your art station down there, but maybe that'll link to like other things, perhaps um, or Zeus creates. Yeah, go by yeah. Zeus creates as well. Um, yeah, it's so, mostly Zeus underscore creates everywhere. Yeah. Only uh, on YouTube, it's Zeus space creates. Um, so just just. For, for everyone's info following this right now, we got all the winner's info linked down below. Um, but I'm blown away that you've only been in 3D for two years, man. That's crazy. Like we see people in the chat here and like, they're like, what, two years only? It's crazy. So you guys started during COVID, right? Yeah, yeah, around that time, yes. See y'all? That this is what happens when you apply yourself when you got some free time, okay? You're like, what the heck am I gonna do? I have all this free time. Um, let's learn something awesome. And man, yeah, you I was really bored. It. Yeah, a lot of us were, man. A lot of us I were. Was, I was kind of lost as well, what to do with life. So you know, I was just trying out stuff. The Photoshop I started because of uh, Benny Productions. I I think a lot of people might know that channel. It's about is two million the, subs, I think, right now. Is that on uh, Instagram? Like it's just no, like little Photoshop YouTube. tutorials, right? Yeah, Photoshop tutorials. Yeah, I okay. started with Photoshop. Yeah, yeah. And then I branched out to three D around that time, December, uh, January, uh, to January of twenty twenty one. That that area. Yeah. So I I mean, dude, I saw your your um, Infinite Journeys render. That's the that's six months before this, okay? This is six months ago, seven months ago, when we did our yeah. second to last 3D challenge. And like, you've come such a long way, man. It's so cool to see. Um, Thanks, man. I wanna, so I wanna get into this art, right? Everyone's probably wondering like, how do you go about creating this? What is your personal approach to getting started with a scene like this? Like, what, when, when, when the challenge was announced, right? And you saw all of these um, Tai Chi mocap files, where did your brain start going? Like, how did you start coming up with ideas? What's your process for coming up with ideas? So uh, the challenge just got announced and I saw all the different mocap animations available, like 27, 28 of them. Yeah. And I was really overwhelmed totally. Like I was thinking that, uh, how do I even get, come up with an idea when I have so many ideas available in front of me? And then uh, I just went into ArtStation and Pinterest try to search uh, for ideas and see if there's anything that strike that struck me uh, instantly. 
I try to see uh, all the ideas that other people have. Just uh, random visuals. There's uh, like no idea at that point. And then I was browsing uh, even uh, Discord, like what discussion people were having with each other, how were they thinking about the challenge. And then I uh, found out about Prismon. So I wanted to give him a shout out here as well. Uh, he actually helped me a lot in this challenge, like a lot of feedback from him. Uh, it wouldn't have been possible without him, to be honest. His feedback was invaluable to me. Wow, so, that's awesome, uh, man. Shout outs. Yeah. So uh, I uh, went into his art station and then I saw his uh, Coco breakdown. By the way, I can show it right now if you want. Yeah, let me his, switch over. Uh, Coco breakdown. Yeah, are you seeing it right now? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the breakdown that he made. So the actual image that he made. This is not from the movie. The movie is on below, I think. Yeah, so this is this is his and this is the reference. Do you even oh, see Oh, wow. So it's like difference? a... Uh, no, like it's, it looks like he was doing a study, right? Trying to study to see. Yeah, yeah. To yeah, recreate the study right? of yeah. the scene. Yeah, and this is where I got the idea of the attic from. I thought let's just watch oh. the movie first, and then yeah, see how Pixar does their lighting and stuff. And from there, I got the idea of the attic. So I have also. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So this is the inspiration that I have. Uh, I basically found it from here. So I yeah. watched Coco and then came back and I thought, let's just make an attic scene like this. So with nice. candles and uh, uh, with candles, uh, lighting and a TV somewhere. Yeah, this is my idea that I have. And uh, I can show you the concept as well. Yeah, like, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So, so the, this is a great lookout that I made. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. just really important. You know, it's really important to yeah. To have a direction, like, you know. Yeah, it's really important. Like, I have been participating in these challenges uh, since around 2021, uh, the alternate realities one. And uh, yeah, uh, I did not really do uh, such a concept before. So I think this was very new, new new to me as well. Yeah. So this is the concept that Ooh. I had. So everything is uh, like, the ideas are there, but the, uh, uh, the, but the placements are just weird, right? Like this uh, areas, uh, like I have the items that I want, but uh, the placements are just off by a lot. Okay. But I have a basic idea to go with, I think. Yeah. 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 So basically, you did a block out. You knew that your room was going to be mm -hmm. about that shape, and you are in Blender. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Blender. You make a lot of people happy in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Blender. The Blender cult is happy. Yeah. <laughs> So you did a block out, um, you found your animation, you kind of got like yeah. a basic lighting set up and then you're going in yeah. and you're going to Photoshop or whatever and you're just kind of yeah, sketching yeah. Yeah, Photoshop. Yes. ideas and exploring ideas. Yeah. My and... sketching is really bad, but it does the job, you know? Yeah. It I mean, just for me, it's no one yeah. should see it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, this is basically the idea that I had at first. And uh, after that, I can show you the test. Oh yeah, bring it on. Okay. This is the basic scene. Okay, this is the first, uh, after the concept, I did this. Uh, I just <laughs> uh, put put on, put some other objects in the scene and tried to see how the scene will look with these. And then I went ahead and even refined it further. Just, you can see uh, everything just changing image by image. Yeah. I just put in some random images here. I think I got it from Inbato Elements and just try to see if these work. And then after that, I tried some different lighting as well. Yeah. You can see the TV, uh, the backlit TV. This is basically the same as Coco mm -hmm. uh, in my reference. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, yeah. I think uh, I, I got you. Too, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So after that, um, I just keep going and adding details and just refining the lighting further and further. You can see just uh, in this one, it's just backlit. Mm. I was thinking of going the same direction as Coco that they had in the scene. Just a bit uh, bigger scene, not as cramped as that one. So you're and like, it's, it's tough what you're doing because like to, 
to really build out your scene, you just have to add a ton of stuff and it's not gonna feel yeah. right and filled in until you have a yeah. ton of stuff. It's gonna feel empty like for so yeah, long. Yeah, like exactly. how, how long did your scene feel empty before you knew like, okay, this, yeah, is, this is feeling it was, nice. It was very long. Like it was uh, always looking empty. I was always thinking like, what sort of stuff can I add so that it looks better? Uh, it's basically set dressing. So I had to think of a lot of stuff. I had to basically think that, uh, how, what does the kid do? What does the kid have? Well, what does his parents have in the attic? Uh, what are his ambitions? What are his uh, current interests? These are the questions that you need to ask yourself. So I've also written these in the same, uh, in this art station breakdown uh, about dressing part. I think it's down here somewhere. Um, it's a beautiful breakdown too. If you guys have a chance to take a look at it after, after the stream here like or you know just pull up alongside it's like it's really well if done, i miss it's something it's probably here yeah if i miss something here yeah you can see just uh just go through this breakdown it's mostly here i think that's a great thing to so touch any... on though is like character and how character can build out your scene and your story and you have to ask yourself like yeah what is this character into if you're putting together like a character's bedroom or in this case a character's attic you have to put stuff up there that you know fits the character and if it just seems like a bunch of random stuff you know you're gonna miss out so keep going please yeah i'm so interested in like yeah, yeah, in this yeah. process yeah yeah so yeah i'm just uh adding random stuff here just trying to uh, figure out what works and what doesn't mm -hmm. uh you can see the desk behind the character this is very small right now <laughs> it's like the scale is totally off mm -hmm. right now so uh, these are the things that uh, even Prismal pointed out to me. So this is why it's very important to get some feedback from others because you can always miss stuff like this, like the scale being off or some random light not working. Uh, these are the bigger picture things I think you uh, need help with sometimes. When you're working with a big project, sometimes you just uh, miss these stuff. So uh, always yeah. try to get someone to get someone to look at your stuff. So you can see the, uh, the uh, table looks so weird, right? It looks like a table for, I don't know, for dwarfs maybe? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So after that, you can see these chair and the stool that I have. They are too big for the scene. But I was just way too focused on trying to correct the lighting. I didn't really pay attention to them. But slowly and slowly, the scene developed. I tried different lighting, uh, different types of lighting. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, this is uh, the place where it's all coming together almost. Uh, the lighting is at least. Uh, yeah, I thought that the TV was not working in the background, so mm. I just placed to the right. It's nice. Because, yeah, uh, it frames it kind of frames yeah, the character. Yeah, it, it just yeah, it just looks uh, it just takes away attention. I think that in this one, like if the TV is just behind him, it's just a bit too distracting. So that's why I uh, put it to the right here. Good it just move. balances it out as well. Yeah, yeah. Move. Yeah, I tried some different lighting from the TV. Uh, this purple lighting was not working. I just tried it in case it worked. A lot of trial and error at this point, really. I think like, that's good though. Because like to, to, to touch on what you said about trying that purple, but it totally didn't work. Like, the, But yeah. what if it did, right? So you, you would never yeah, know exactly. if it works or not unless you try it. And I think one thing that's very important here with, with all of our art is that if you have a goal in mind, and I think I've talked about this before, but you have a clear direction from the beginning, right? You had your attic scene, you had mm -hmm. the Coco style, um, you know, set up yeah. and um, you, you have a pretty good idea of where you're going. And if you head in that direction yeah. and you blindly go in that direction, like you might be missing all of these awesome turnoffs that will make your art yes. so much cooler in the end. And there's no yeah. way to like discover those awesome turnoffs um well turnoffs probably not the best word to use but you know what i'm saying like it's an alternate path right yeah yeah um exactly you have to try it so so much of 3d is trial and error so it's cool to see you doing that here as you're creating you're seeing what works what doesn't and you're just you know feeling out the vibe yeah. the whole time yeah it's like happy little accidents you know like bob ross says mm -hmm. you have to do uh, do stuff and sometimes there are happy little accidents along the way uh, I want to ask about lighting a... eventually. Yeah, yeah. But I'll keep going. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so this is the Zen table that I added. Uh, I thought that this character's feet were sliding a bit, and I didn't really want to go through the effort of fixing it. So I just added this. Uh, it works with the scene, I think. <laughs> that's well. perfect. Yeah, that's some... perfect. Yeah, it's a <laughs> very uh, dirty fix, but it's it works, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. Also, by the way, TV the TV is actually a model from an image. I have shown it here as well. Where is it? Yeah. This is the image, and I just used mm. uh, Ian Hubert's technique, that is image plane modeling. Ah, oh, yeah, so good. And this is the final TV. Yeah, I didn't want to waste time on this, like modeling it perfectly since it's a background asset. So I just modeled it together very fast. It looks perfect, man. Like it's such a yeah, such a great technique, man. Thank thank God for Ian Hubert. <laughs> I think all of us can say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so I'll just quickly go through these. Yeah. Uh, we got another 15 minutes or so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I uh, added this as well, the secret dojo thing uh, as a Tori gate. This was my plan all along to add uh, a sort of Tori gate to <laughs> unite the foreground and background, foreground and midground, uh, so that when the camera moves back, you just see this thing. It just adds a layer of depth, I guess. That's why I added it. Totally, and there's some story in there too. Yeah, 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 exactly. Then I just kept adding stuff trying different basically adding lots of stuff right now there's there's not much to talk about i added my old art here as well like my alternate reality center the infinite journeys the uh, what is this uh, the dynamic machines one. Oh my god <laughs> those were just easter eggs that's the, awesome yeah the easter eggs yeah so this is where the test renders end i have more i think this is a character test how long did you spend on the character versus the environment um character i think i this challenge i think i uh, finished the character very early because i thought that last uh, challenge i left it for too late so i didn't really spend too much i think i just used a daz character and from there i uh, created very basic clothes in marvelous designer the only thing that caused me issues was the animation it was clipping a lot yeah the animation that number 20, 22 animation Mm -hmm. So I had actually uh, done a few little tests uh, where I was trying to fix the character uh, a lot, but I finally managed to do it. These are the different tests I had. And I was even trying the other animation. This was easier. Uh, there, were, there was not much clipping, but I thought that if I didn't fix this, then uh, I would be defeated. I really need to fix this myself uh, instead of just going with an easier animation. So yeah, that, I had to uh, go into the graph editor manually and fix it and then uh, do the clothes and it took a little bit of time, but not much, honestly. That's good, man. And then I, most of the yeah. time was spent in environment design. Yeah. Okay, That's I good. think we can go into the now. In into what? Oh, I lost you again. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Hey. Got you, got you. Yeah. Okay, so we can go into the lighting maybe. The lighting part. Yeah, let's take a look. Take a look at the final. Let's take a look at the final image yeah, this here. Is... Um, Soto, if you want to switch over to my screen, perhaps we can just take a look at this final. Like, I I think this is incredible. It's you have talking about lighting, right? You have all of these, mm -hmm. like, y y man, it's just great. Yeah, it's all these different little pools of light that are perfectly placed to make um, the contrast shine man like you're really highlighting the character here the lamp it all feels natural i think that's the thing is it feels mm. natural yeah um yeah i had to add these practical lights the lamp the tv and the lamp above those are the main light sources yeah yep and then you kind of just like well let's get into it yeah let's switch back and like let's see let's see how you yeah. set up your lighting for this because i'm very curious Yeah. Hey. We got you. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this is uh, my scene, my final scene. Uh, as you can see, and then camera, everything is in front. Only the other part behind the camera, there is nothing. Of course. Yeah. I don't want to waste my time. Uh, and then uh, this is my. Okay. Where is it? Yeah. This is my background point lights. So these can. Oh, we lost you again audio you got you what's going in and out so these yeah 
Yeah. Can you hear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So these brown point lights that you're seeing. So these are basically uh, for the candles that I have on the scene. Oh, so yeah. these are uh, flickering, flickering a little bit. Uh, I just use the graph editor. I have in my R station, by the way, if anyone wants to know how I did it. So, uh, so yeah, uh, they're just uh, plugged into a noise modifier and they're just flickering around a little bit. They're just offset a little bit here and there so that it doesn't look all the same and it gives that candle flickering effect. So that awesome. is the background lighting. Yeah. So it's and, just uh, the candles. The mid yeah, for just the candles. All, uh, literally all of the point lights. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And now left. Okay, I just that scene. Uh, and, and these are some awesome. rim lights that I added. These are some Yeah, hello. I can't hear you. Hello. I don't know what it is. Yeah, can you hear me? I got nothing. No, I can't hear. Yeah, get, can you hear me now? Oh. <laughs> well, if I can't hear, I can't. <laughs> I got, I got Soto Monte. Okay. I got Soto Monte in one ear. I got Zeus Creates in another ear. Okay. So I, I can't okay. hear at this. Yeah, I'm, I've lost you, bud. I can't hear you. Mm. I still got nothing. What is happening? I'm not oh, sure. I got nothing. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So these are the rim lights that I have. Uh, this this lamp is actually doing a light source. Yeah. Yeah. These are the rim lights that I have. Not happening can you guys hear me in the stream um, they're saying don't move the scene you can hear <laughs> hey zeus go go back to like your art station page or something uh okay does this work okay i still can't hear you should i close my blender scene Uh, okay. Uh, All right, so it looks like they can hear you. Some people can hear, some can hear people me? can't. They're saying don't move the scene, it interrupts the stream. Should, should I, should I just close the screen? I RAM. I, it's yeah, hungry. Just close it. <laughs> they can hear you, but Does I can't work hear now? you. So I close the stream. <laughs> A Close blind blender, interview. Yeah. Close the blender. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. We got we got another seven seven minutes or so. Um, hmm. Zeus, can you hear okay. me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. That's so funny. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Huh? What? Dude, this is hilarious. Where is it? On the screen. On the screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where this is some backwards, like you guys are seeing the inner workings here of the stream. Lots going on here. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what's some going on? Can, so our, Sotomonte, are you going to translate into my ear? I'm hearing. So I can just go through this, I guess. Soto, I don't need to go ears. to my blender scene. All right, let's yeah, look at this lighting. Break down this lighting for me. What you got yeah, going yeah. on here? We're yeah, talking okay. about them candles, but what else you got? Yeah, and then the midground be a lots of area lights around the lamp and the main lamp as well. So uh, those are just uh, lighting up the entire midground section. 
uh, I have this uh, area here. See, uh, characterized and dog lighting rims with practical lights accentuated by fake lights. So these are basically fake lights. Uh, the lamp is doing nothing, but uh, the fake lights are the one that is lighting this uh, mid-ground area, to be honest. And then there's some rim lights for the yeah. Zen table cloth nice. as well. The Zen table cloth and Z Zen stones. Um, and uh, there are some more point lights for the mid-ground bulb. Uh, wooden uh, I'm, that call I'm not sure wooden <laughs> thing I'm not sure what that call rough yeah so and then uh, here are the point lights uh, there are just tiny bulbs just tiny uh, point lights for those tiny bulbs near the Tory gate that I have and then there is an entire uh, fill light like for the, the Christmas lights scene, little tiny so that point everything lights. yeah and then uh, I have this fill light for the entire scene so that everything just doesn't go to uh, uh, just go to every, just so that everything just doesn't go to the black uh, section so that uh, I have some level of uh, what, to, what to say. Light there is. Yeah, and uh, these are the candles. You can see everything uh the sculpted candle the flame emission plane and a point light for those a simple wax material show it but i'm not gonna risk it if uh yeah if uh, the stream crashes or something yeah so this is the uh, layer stack i think you can see it I'm not sure but yeah it doesn't doesn't zoom in so this is the uh, main raw render that I had, and this is the compositing. Hey, Zeus, see uh, if you can close render. Blender. Try closing Blender. OK. Yeah, all right, I closed it now. Is that any better? No, nah, still nothing. It's OK. All right, so here, we're going to have to do <laughs> the the this blind interview. We're going to wrap this up. We got. Two more minutes anyway. It's all good until we get our next guest. So, okay. um, yeah. if you guys want to check out more of Zeus's stuff, his art station is linked in the description. Um, go check it out. Dig into this breakdown. He's obviously, as you can see, got a lot of cool stuff, a lot of detail that went into this breakdown. Um, congratulations again, man. Thank you so much for, for coming on and doing Thanks, this. Man. And for second place, that's it's been an honor. freaking huge, man. You've come such a long way. Absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah, you've come such a long way since all of these challenges. You've been doing every single one of these challenges, and like it's so cool to see you progress through each one of those. Um, even through the weekly challenges, it, it's such a freaking awesome, cool thing to see. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much yeah, thank for you so doing much. this, for putting the work together. Thank on you this, for doing for these challenges. Me, yeah. Thank you for doing these challenges. Absolutely, these are... absolutely. I will talk to you soon. But uh, guys, we're gonna hit our next. Uh, artist here. Okay. Um, See you then. Coming up. Thank you, Zeus. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. Good stuff. Later. All right. Goodbye. Bye bye. Who's this? Who? Who do we got? Dimitri, where are you at? Hi. Dimitri. <gasps> I'm here. Oh, you're here. Hello. Yep. Uh, uh, levels peaking. <laughs> I see red. Let me get a little audio test, Dimitri. Um, hello? Yeah. What's Everything up? Everything fine? Right, we'll um, get there. We'll get there. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> um, let me get your art pulled up on the screen here for you. Because um, it is some incredible, incredible... I can also stuff. open it myself. I have it prepared. Um, Dimitri, hey man. Welcome. Congratulations. How are you doing today? Um, I'm doing good. Awesome, man. Awesome, awesome. Um, congratulations. Your art, freaking so nice, man. You got uh, third place in the challenge. Um, the infinite, Thanks. not infinite journeys. What am I saying? The movie meditations 3D challenge. Absolutely beautiful scene. I love the darkness of it. I love like the, the design elements going on here. These 2D elements. Um, mm -hmm sunburst Thanks. back here very very filmic man so let me let me start with uh 
how did you get started in 3D? Like, um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, a little bit of background for everyone here? Well, I started started learning 3D like only two years ago, but before that, <laughs> I actually was always interested in filmmaking. So I already had experience before that. Uh, I was like, I always like to see a movie first and then to see a like BTS breakdown of all the scenes how they set up a uh, green screen and how they explained how they did all the shots and VFX. It was always uh, super interesting for me, even like since my childhood. And originally I started doing some simple um, videos with my friends uh, in Windows Movie Maker. Then I switched yes. to, uh, to Sony Vegas. And then I started learning After Effects back when I was like 12, I think. It was like 10 years ago. So. I already had some experience before, even before 3D. Uh, so yeah, it was a little easier to get good looking Im image from from yeah. only two years of experience. I think um, we started very, very similarly. I started out filming little silly videos with my friends using Windows Movie Maker because um, mm -hmm. it is free. It comes with your computer. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think being a fan of movies, is you know like you have a background of references in your mind and you know yeah. shots you know angles you know lighting you maybe don't know it know it but you can re you can see it in your head you remember it from the movies that you saw and i think mm -hmm. you know having a a list uh, of of references like that watching a bunch of movies playing a bunch of games like are, are you a gamer at all are you playing games yeah i, I play a lot of games yeah see um, I, yeah that's awesome my favorite games are they're so serious serious and you can probably see it in my artwork the inspiration what would you say what games inspired this art if any um mostly it was dark souls and bloodborne oh dude those are just some of the best masterpiece oh man yeah it's that lighting mm -hmm. man that blue dark lighting is incredible so you said you guys started two years ago and what program are you in i'm using blender <laughs> more love for the blender yes i love it man it, it makes sense like if you guys are starting uh in 3d these days like it's free right so it's the most accessible i would say and obviously you can see here that you can do top notch work with it um so there's no reason not to to dive in um, did you also get started in 3D during COVID? Yeah, I believe it was around that time. Uh, I saw that Ian Hubert was doing his lazy tutorials back then. So that was where I started from trying to repeat his tutorials. Amazing, man. Amazing. Did you have a group of friends in your area um, that you could like sync up with and show stuff with? Or was it just more on the internet, more on like Discord? Yeah, I have a bunch of artists, friends, and we always share knowledge with each other and are trying to learn Blender together. That's great, man. I think it's very important to have a network of people, of friends that can help push each other for this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, all right, so let's get into it, man. Uh, once the challenge was announced, how did you go about coming up with an idea um, usually I would try to find some references and maybe do a simple sketch but this time the process was a little uh, a little different so here I can show you on my screen the first render I did from the um, for the render um, yeah we see so yeah. cool I only knew that I wanted to make a uh, some sort of desert scene in the night and with a big planet in the background and the first idea i got from looking at all the animations was that i wanted to make some magic circles going on and like some runes behind the character uh i just wanted to learn how to do magic prefix this time for the um, during this challenge mm, so okay. this was the very first uh render from the scene that i got 
uh, it's really simple. The background mountains are just uh, made with the default Blender add-on for creating landscapes. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how it's called, but it was just for the like as a placeholder. So the first thing I did then was I decided to add the texture at least to the ground. So because I needed to start somewhere. So uh, for this texture, I used uh, textures from Quixel Megascans and mix a bunch of mud texture in Quixel Mixer to get this uh, texture that wouldn't look too r repeated on the ground. But yeah. then I pretty much covered everything with rocks, so we don't even see it in the final video. So question, mm -hmm. you right now at this point, you're you're kind of blocking out your lighting, you're blocking out your scene. Mm -hmm. Are you working off of any reference? Do you have a reference board or are you just off the top of your head on this? Uh, this time I didn't have any references, but usually I try to uh, figure, to find, figure the f final image before I start. Uh, and I try to imagine the final look of the image before I even start uh, doing it. But this time I was just kind of, um, creating uh, whatever ideas I get along the way. So so you're just uh, kind of at in this like point, free play kind of mode, just experimenting. Yeah, this time I didn't even know that I would add the ruins uh, in the scene. I just didn't know how it will end up looking yeah. at the end. Wow, so you're truly just like flying free and coming up with what's cool. How many, how many days, like do you give yourself like, okay, after X amount of days, I got to be at a certain point in my render or you, yeah. do you have a schedule for this or are you just like, you know, caution to the wind. I'm just going for it. Actually, I saw a tutorial for that in your Discord server. Some, I don't remember who posted the Connor. Yeah, it's Connor. Yeah. Bad yeah. Connor. I, I just used that to, to roughly imagine where I should be at, at the end of each week. Amazing. OK, OK. Um, All right. So continue. I, yeah, this is awesome. Okay, so here I replace the mountains in the background with this uh, like weird pointy shapes, uh, which are kind of flat on top. To make those, I used uh, a program called Gaia. Gaia. I don't know how how it's pronounced, but Gaia. This one. Uh, it's a program where you can generate uh, landscapes uh, really easily from noise, and I just used the default preset for this kind of desert looking hill and change the, the, the settings a bunch of times to get different looking mountains. Oh, and nice. Here I was just adding more and more mountains. And at this point, uh, what I'm trying to get is I'm looking at leading lines. I'm already st starting to think about uh, composition. Right here, you can see that the biggest mountains are on the sides. And as I get closer to the middle, they are getting smaller. So we get kind of those diagonal lines towards the character, which lead your eye towards the center of the image. And I will repeat the same thing all over uh, again uh, during later steps uh, with even smaller assets. So here I was just messing with the roughness of the ground and with light. Uh, I specifically made the mud uh, a little more shiny as they usually light like uh, uh, night scenes in the movie, you know, like how they would wet, so it mm -hmm. would uh, reflect the lighting and it just looks um, way cooler make the that image. Way. Yeah, yeah, that was what I was trying to make here. So right here, I didn't know what to add on the sides, uh, and it looked really empty and boring at this point. So I added a, a couple of hills on sides, and they also create those leading lines toward the center. They kind of create this visual vignette screen yeah um, I've, I found that that's like a really nice way to well of course right when we talk about vignettes we're talking about just darkening the edges of the frame to kind of draw the eye to the center of the photo or the mm. or the image right and you could do that you I mean I do it on pretty much every single one of my renders is I'll crank the vignette so it really focuses it on the center composition but another thing you can do is you can get tricky with it and you can naturally vignette your scene or your character. And yeah. Dimitri, that's what you're talking about right now is using mm -hmm. these mountains 
to naturally make the edges darker um, and kind of direct the light to the character in the foreground. I think that's, it's, I love seeing natural vignettes. It, it, it's amazing. It's so nice. Mm -hmm. And they also make the composition easy to understand. You just immediately, immediately look at the image and see the main part of the image uh, when you're, when you have a bunch of leading lines in the frame. So at this point, I added a bunch of these like wooden poles all over the scene. They kind of remind me, remind me of medieval times and you always see something like that in Dark Souls games. Uh, they are made just from pixel bridge assets uh, stuck together. Oh, okay. So you're and, kit bashing these things. They look really yeah, nice. And those dudes, dudes are just uh, a zombie model from Mixama. So yeah, nothing complicated. That's great. And here I here I was adding a bunch of trees in the background and you don't even see them in the final image. So, uh, that's that, uh, that's my biggest problem. I always do a lot of work that that's unnecessary that I will hide in the final image. And it takes a lot of time to add those details. I need to figure out a better way of working someday. Oh man, you and I both like I, I yeah, I'm, I'm a sucker for that. I really tried to avoid that on my last piece of art here for this challenge. Um, Cause I remember during infinite journeys when I was making my like race car cockpit scene and I was modeling all these details. And I, you know, I talk about the idea that I was kind of, I was like running away from the work I knew that needed to be done. That was kind of a little scary, namely the character working on my character. Um, mm -hmm. And I was doing things that like were just fun for me, which was modeling um, and adding detail. But at the end, I just wasted so much time on it. Um, and it, it, it really stopped me from pushing the art as far as it could have gone. So it's good that you recognize that. I think it's something that we're all trying to to work on. We want to work as efficiently as possible, obviously. And like, you know, but sometimes when you're creating art, you know, efficiency isn't the first thing. You, you can't just be efficient. You do need to like do some trial and error and, and work on some stuff and see how things look. But I, I think, you know, you're talking about the trees here that you put all these trees in. Are the trees in this image right here or are they in a previous one? Mm, both here and in the previous one. I just was moving them around. Yeah, okay, so you got some shrubs, you got some like trees in the far back. I mean, they look really nice. I think if I was at your point in the process, like I would I would have thought those trees are awesome and they do look awesome. I would just keep going on, on the process here. So at this point in your process, you're building it out, you're finding your scene. How mm -hmm. do you how do you feel about it right now? If you can imagine yourself a month and a half ago um, at this point in the process, at this point, I still didn't like what I was getting because it was still too empty, and I wasn't sure if I'll get a nice looking image in the end. I didn't know how much details uh, I'll need to add in the future, but then um, it was all good when I started adding a bunch of rocks in the foreground right here. Uh, I started adding little rocks and maybe it was too early, but the overall composition was kind of already in its place. So I decided to s start adding a bunch of little details all over the place. Ooh, that's a nice. Like, was... Ooh, okay, it's starting to get nice. Yeah, I was just adding more and more rocks all over the place. Mm. So all from Pixel Bridge. Oh. And even here, I'm still trying to maintain the leading lines on the sides. Even though I'm covering the hill, I'm still trying to make this diagonal line, uh, line be visible. And Dude. here, I simplify the shape of the mountain so it would uh, both look giant and also would create a really simple shape with a leading lines, line toward uh, the center. This is this is freaking beautiful. I gotta stop you here. I'm gonna. I mean, that's that's my job. I'm just gonna stop you and keep asking questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, where where are you learning composition? Where are you learning lighting? Is it just from watching movies and being like, I like that movie, and I'm gonna try and like reference that, or or like, you know, uh, are you watching tutorials on YouTube? What are you doing to learn? 
uh, I'm watching tutorials on YouTube and also before I started doing 3D, I started learning concept art and how to like draw in 2D in Photoshop. So I was watching a lot of tutorials about that, about drawing and doing concept art in general. So that was where I learned a lot more about uh, composition and the color theory in general. Now, are these like paid services or is this just YouTube like concept art? Uh, mo concept? Mostly it's just uh, free tutorials on YouTube. That's actually a really nice idea is is watching tutorials on concept design, concept art, environmental concept art. I never even mm -hmm. thought of that because I just assumed like I know what I know and what I know is good enough when it comes to composition. Like I know some tricks, but of course, we're all trying to learn and grow our bag of tools, right? So that's not a bad idea is to dive into some con environmental concept tutorials. That's pretty sweet. Might have to do that. Okay, Continue, so, please. Yeah, I'm loving this. Um, Here on the right side, I was getting this weird shape uh, with a bunch of mountains and didn't like it because it just seemed too broken down and random and ugly. I wanted to make to simplify it later. So uh, a bit later, I'll change it to just one continuous shape of a mountain. Here I was just messing with some grass and adding more rocks. And then here you can see I'm still adding those leading lines. This rock is a little bigger and this one is smaller. Everything in the shot should make little leading lines towards the center. Mm. And even here is this rock. Everything is purposeful, man. I love it. And this was where I added those like uh, sculptures or I, I don't know how to call them, just dead people made of stone. Dude, uh, oh, so powerful. It looks so good. Yeah, I I don't remember where I got this uh, reference, but it just reminds me of Dark Souls, so I, so I decided to, to do it here. <laughs> That's a good enough reason. <laughs> um, and even with those starters, uh, as you can see, I'm still making those leading lines towards the center. Mm -hmm. And I'll shape them even more later. So here was Ooh, this where I decided that it has a lot of empty space uh, on top. So I wanted to make some simple structures with uh, really readable shapes uh, like those arches. So I made just with the, with the cubes mm -hmm. uh, this thing first. And then I replaced it with uh, ruins made in 3D code. 3D code is uh, really useful for making uh, those kinds of these kinds of uh, ruins really quickly. 3D and code. You pr 3D code. Here I'll show you. 3D code. You can do everything the same in Blender and in ZBrush, but I just don't know how to do it in there. So I, I decided to learn a completely new program just to do ruins. Amazing. But it works. Amazing. Also, I recorded a small demonstration um, yesterday. So to do uh, a simple assets like this, for example, this wall, first thing you need to do, find this tutorial, Free Code Basics for Concept Art by Art of Joss Vega on YouTube. It's one hour long and it explains everything you need to know, everything, um, like, uh, everything you need to know about uh, basic tools to make the simplest assets in here. And the second uh, thing you need to do is go to ArtStation and find Alex Pai profile. He has two really cool packs of stencils on uh, Marketplace. Stencils are these black and white textures that you can use to create a lot of details really quickly. Wow. This uh, whole wall of bricks was made just with a texture like this. So. I overlay this um, image on top and just use a build tool. Uh, it just in one click, I create uh, a lot of details like this, just from the texture. Heck yeah. And this is re uh, that's why the 3D code is really powerful. Uh, you can create really detailed assets really quickly. Here I'm overlaying this uh, like mud or rocket texture on top. And in a couple of clicks, I'm adding a lot of details all over the place. That's awesome. And then I would uh, export this model to Blender, 3D, and uh, I mean UV, um, Unwrap it, 
uh, with just the default tools like Smart EV Project. And then, then I would import it to Substance Painter and just uh, mess with uh, Smart Materials a little bit. Uh, and then just a couple of clicks, I'll get this really cool looking detailed asset. And then I'll just uh, import all the textures in Blender. And here, only like in 20 minutes yesterday, I made this wall. So yeah, uh, Tricot is really powerful for creating Sweet. such stuff. Thank you. Yeah, good to know. So that's how you're doing the stuff on the left and the right. These yeah. walls, architectural little bits. Sweet. Okay. So then I was just uh, doing some more details. Also, I added this like circle uh, stuff um, right here. I just wanted to make this feel, uh, uh, make this place feel like a some old temple. So I'm adding more uh, elements to the ground like this one and here i'm added a bunch of tiles and put them on the sides and also you can see here that i put the guys in a really simple arrow shape there that uh, which is pointing to the center and so is here on the right side and that was almost everything for the 3d part here's just a uh, painting in the background for the character i just used the um, character model i already had on my pc for from a from an old project which we were working on with my friend so i didn't do much stuff for the uh, character this time I only simulated the clothes uh, in marvelous designer mm. okay, okay for so for the matte painting here i'll show you this was the matte painting i made in photoshop mm. I just cool. rendered the, the very first uh, frame of the sequence and painted on top of it. Mm. You paint it? Wait, how'd you do those clouds? Was that a brush or is that just like... Uh, clouds is just hand painted. It took it the whole day to paint this thing with uh, different brushes. What? But You painted yeah. those? Yeah. Good God! Dude, it looks That's why so you need good. to start from uh, learning how to draw. Just to do mid paintings. What the heck? Thank you. <laughs> wow. What about the sky? Is that HDRI? Or did you paint that too? Um, I, um, before that, you can see right here. This sky was just an HDRI I had on my PC, and I just kind of re referenced it in terms, of, in, in terms of color to make this one. Here, it just it was just a solid layer for the background with uh, star stars photo correlate on top uh -huh. and ah, f also for the reference i used these shots from Aladdin, uh, these uh, concept arts oh, i really like the color and the how they light the night scene so yeah. i was referencing that for the mid painting yeah it's beautiful i love your scene like i would love to explore this world the lighting is thank just, you i love blue hour man like right before, right when the sun goes down and there's just a little bit left in the sky like you have here. So like where the highlight of the sky, the yellow of the sky meets the clouds, was that painted or was that an image? Uh, that was the image. Okay, okay. I was about to it's a combination of uh, images and like hand painting. Dang, it's so good. Uh, what I did then was I separated this whole image in separate layers and put them into the actual, projected the images on actual planes in 3D scene. So when the camera would move in the video, so you would see a little bit of distortion in there, but Maybe. you still can't, can't, can't see it in the final video. So I'm still doing a lot of unnecessary work. Here you can <laughs> see some, some passes uh, I, I had three layers in 3D, uh, but then I rendered them into only two images just so it would be easier for compositing. I didn't need the third layer. I just needed it to move properly in the frame. I see. So you're just trying to get some parallax when you zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So here I'll show you my uh, passes that I had after I finished the uh, everything in 3D. So I had two passes like this. Mm -hmm. This was the background where I later put uh, uh, an explosion. 
this was a little closer. Also, I had two smoke layers. I made this smoke, uh, volumetric smoke in Embergen. It's a just default preset of some dust or sand, Amazing. something like that. I just tweaked it a little bit and put directly to Blender. Um, so here are other, this was the foreground pass. Also had two passes for, I mean, miss pass. I needed two of them uh, just to get a little more resolution or like color depth here. Yes. Uh, I use I this pass uh, to blend uh, 3D layer to matte painting right here. I masked this part to blend uh, softly from 3D stuff to matte painting in the background. So now but we're talking you, compositing, right? So you have your final yeah. render and you're doing this what in After Effects? Yep. Okay. All right. So you exported your final, and these are these would be image sequences, right? Um, mm -hmm. That you'd be working in After Effects with. Okay. So we're, I we got. I want to touch on two things before we go. We got about five minutes left here. So first, I want to talk about how you're compositing this, what you're doing to composite it. Like if you have a before and after of composited versus not composited, and then the then the, the second thing I want to talk about is the like this light spiral looks like a spell that's being cast behind the character um how you created that so i'll get into those two things before we wrap it out yeah okay so to make this originally i just made it in photoshop just uh, to the image then i imported it to after effects separated it, it into a bunch of uh, different elements and animated everything in there here i can show you Uh, so I just animated it in After Effects first. Here's the project. I added uh, yes. noise to just to give more details in here. So sick. And I did the whole animation in here. Oh. So was this ever mm -hmm. in 3D in Blender or was this always in After Effects? Uh, then I rendered it into three different parts, the big circle, the smaller circles and the runes of the circles and put uh, them into actual 3D space in Blender and uh, tracked it to the characters uh, back. So... That extra um, little bit of like parallax looks so nice, man. Ah, so good. Yeah. Also, so, hold on, I just got a shout out for just just very quickly in the chat. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <clears throat> Someone I've known since like first grade is in the chat right now. That's insane. I hadn't talked to Sam in freaking ages. Shout outs to you, Sam. <laughs> God, that's very random for literally everyone except Sam. But I got to say, what's up, dude? <laughs> All right, Dimitri, apologies. You must continue. Okay, so. An interesting thing that I did for the first time was I did this pass for tracking. I didn't know how to compose it to uh, the elements easily, so I did this pass. I just put a bunch of 2D planes into the actual 3D scene and then used uh, those squares to track to the elements in. Uh, so this was uh, on the back of the character and this yeah. was a little harder to track. I used, uh, uh, I cropped the image only to the middle part uh, to see on, only this square and tracked it with a 3D camera tracker uh, to put extra to the elements to his back. Awesome. Uh, for example, uh, like this fire element behind the behind everything. Mm. So good. And also I tracked some of the sparks in there. Uh, I made some of the sparks myself, just simulated them in right inside Blender. And some of the sparks was were the pre-made elements from internet. Um, here I can show you the main thing that helped to composite the whole image uh, really easily was plugging cold. Uh, I just closed it. Where's ah super comp? Super so comp. So I used to say yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um. I don't know where it's gone, but I just used uh, Supercomp to compose everything. It's really useful because when you use Supercomp for compositing, you can put something 
some glowing element in the background and it will add light wrap on all of the top layers so you'll see like um like right here you can see the back, uh, background uh, element uh, uh, like makes this glow on top of everything uh, so it looks really realistic it would look the same way if you would shoot it with an actual camera oh man that's huge um, layer app is huge you're talking red giant right Red giant super comp yep that's a good one absolutely so we got about one we got about one more minute for you dimitri mm -hmm. here's the smokes i added to the scene they're all tracked to three different uh parts of the scene so they would move in the correct way you would yes. see it actual movement of the camera even between the smokes this is such a had... huge this is such a huge part of the render process is compositing in you know it could be fusion or after effects but that atmosphere layer you're doing right here all this comp work that's going on is crucial to a render like it's not done once it for me for me at least and it seems like for you as well it's not done once you get it into after effects Fusion and you really start working on it. Is there is there a before and after that you can show like your raw um, Just like beauty image and then your final Only like this right here. Okay So here's the raw 3d render and here's the final Dang. So okay. it changed quite a bit and uh, the last thing I want to say is I couldn't quite figure out the color grade for this image because it was really uh, it was changing heavily between the first frame and the magic part. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I did two color grades. First, I uh, put the sequence to the first frame, did uh, a color grade that would work for this frame. Then I switched to the <clears throat> part of the sequence where he casts magic and did another uh, grade. And then I just blended uh, between them with opacity. So it would start with one grade that works for the beginning and gradually uh, transition to another one. And yeah. that took a, long, a lot of time to figure out. And the last uh, thing I did for color grade was I did this bleach bypass on top of everything. Bleach bypass was just a uh, um, grayscale uh, copy of the image overlaid with overlay mode on top and uh, this is where it got this old movie aesthetic really contrasting oh wow okay so you black and you did a black and white thing and then like overlaid it multiply or something on mm, top? yep um here's how it looked like before the yeah. overlay uh so it just adds a lot of contrast to the image Oh, okay. And, and then for the, for the explosion, I just uh, stuck a bunch of two uh, D um, like uh, effects on top of explosion that I rendered from Eevee. I, originally, I used it just for as a placeholder because I didn't want to make any more complex explosions. I didn't have uh, enough time for that. But then I just had to leave it in there just or expose it so it won't look too janky <laughs> that's what's up dude heck yeah you work with what you got mm -hmm. that's amazing um dimitri i uh we gotta let you go here we're gonna we'll have to move on but i want to say thank you thank you so much for for doing this putting everything you had into this challenge and coming here and showing everyone your workflow your style your art is amazing if you guys want to see more of dimitri's stuff we got uh, linked in the description down below. Go check them out. Um, but thank you again, Dimitri, and congratulations to you, man. Thank you, thank you so much for all that knowledge. And thank you for for your challenges. I always learn a lot of uh, stuff during the process of making my art for challenges. Heck yeah, thank man. You. I hope to see you on the next one. All right, y'all. Oh my goodness. Who, who is this? Christian. Hello, hello. Am I live? Are we live? We're live, dude. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh my god. Hi. All right. How are you, my friend? How are you doing? I would say about equal parts excited and nervous. So... Oh man, no need to be nervous. We're just chilling, having a good time. Where are you okay. from, Chris? 
Uh, I am from Germany. Um, I live in a town called Aachen, uh, which is near Cologne, uh, which might be something that more people know. So it's like when you look at the map, it's right where Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands meet. That's where I am right now. And were you born there? Uh, no, I'm, I moved here uh, for university. Okay, nice. So how long have you been working with 3D? Um, I'm celebrating my two year anniversary this month. Dude, what is this? Is everyone to two years, man? Oh my <laughs> God. Did, did you also get into 3D during COVID? Uh, yeah. So I, um, I'm actually working in 2D animation and I have been doing so for uh, a couple of years. Um, and I always wanted to learn 3D, but when you know how it is, you want to do stuff and then you just don't really get around to doing it. Um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, then, then COVID happened and, um, you know, lockdown and I was stuck at home and that was really boring. Um, and I, or, I suddenly had all of this free time on my hands. So um, I decided to finally do it and um, I started learning cinema. And um, like originally I thought it would, was going to be like more to complement my 2D workflow. Um, like mm -hmm. I, I only wanted to be able to like, you know, move around the camera around like a, an object or like simple stuff. Yeah. Um, but, but then it kind of like, I noticed it was like so much fun to do and um, it kind of became this obsession and I wanted to learn like more and more tools and, and more programs and you know that's that's where I still am at so like, what what was like what was the obsession for you what was the most fun thing for you about 3d oh that's it's kind of everything I think like I enjoy doing characters but I also like doing um, like environment art um, I love texturing mm -hmm. like there's there's few things I don't like. Like I don't like weight painting or retopology, but no. that stuff like that has to be done. Oh, that stuff's brutal. I mean, but dude, it really shows here. Like you you're hitting all of it. You got your textures, you got your character, you got your environment. And like did you do any of the other challenges before this or is this your first challenge? Uh no, that was my first one. So, Dang, um, man. I love yeah. it. It's like those the masks totally remind me of like Crash Bandicoot masks yeah um and like what what what's your reference for these characters like yeah just... so i can show you a bit um like so i had like two main references um for like the characters and actually the scene as a whole um so i take a lot of uh, inspiration from video games like i think a lot of people yes uh, in absolutely this field. um and like one of my major influences was um, the game Kena. Uh, came out last year, and it follows this um, character. Um, it's it's set in this mythical forest, and she's being followed around by these um, cute little um, spirit um, creature thingies, um, the, like these adorable little guys here. Yeah. Um, and also, well, oh, can't switch. Uh, the other major inspiration were like the um oh, the Koroks in the yeah. yeah in the Zelda series. Um which are also these like kind of um spirit like like forest spirit creatures. I can um, hear sorry, the those, sound those of them like the... popping up right now. Yeah. The... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's great. All right, man. Yeah, I, I definitely get that vibe from your render. Um it's very cartoony, it's very vibrant, um, it's whimsical and fun. So you nailed it in terms of like capturing your, can you go back to your PRF board real quick? Yeah, sure. Um, like that's just screenshots of that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, is that a language on the right? What is, what is that? Oh yeah, that's actually, um, so I have in the background, like you can't even see it in the final rendering. Um, let me see if I can bring it up somewhere. Um, so like, let me open this. So like in the very back, there's like these obelisks here and I etched a bit of like um, writing on it and you can't see it like at all. Yeah, I totally um, can't see it. This is kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, there's, there actually is some some text on it and it says uh, it, translate to, it translates to I am Groot. Okay, um, all so right. So it's like, 
that's just a very stupid uh, kind of like Easter egg. And these, um, this this alphabet uh, comes from the game Tunic. Oh, um, dude, I'm playing that right now. That's crazy. That's awesome. So, um, so yeah, there's this the text that you find in the game it actually translates to something. That's great. Yeah, just like Stray. Well, I know they have like their own language in that game, and yeah. it like same but, thing. You know, a sign equals A, another one equals B. You know. Yeah, kind of like that. So, so yeah, that's just like a hidden Easter egg that you don't even see anymore because there's like leaves of, in front of it now. But well, it's there. Let me, let me ask you a question. Like to take it one step back from here. Um, yeah. How did you know what you wanted to make? Like when the challenge was announced and you saw all the the mocap uh, animations, did you know what you wanted to do from day one, or did this take you a few days to like kind of figure out? Um, so I knew I wanted to do like this little spirit creature because I had this like idea back in the back of my head for a few months at that point. Um, but I never really, really gotten around to doing it. Yeah. Um, and then I heard about the theme of the challenge and I thought, well, this might actually go pretty well together. Um, so I knew like adorable spirit creature and obviously it's going to be set in a forest somewhere. And that was about it when I started working on it. So, um, I kind of immediately, immediately jumped into it and, and started like designing this, this creature, um, because I knew the whole idea would like work or break depending on whether I could get it right. So I had like only like a rough idea of how this, the, the, the environment might look like, but I didn't even bother to uh, actually make a sketch or something. I, I just, you know, try to get the character right first and see if that works at all. Okay. All right. So you're in cinema 4d, right? Yeah. All right, so what's your process for trying to get this character to look right? How did that go? Okay, so I actually start in ZBrush for my characters. So it's gonna be like, this is kind of like representative of my um, character workflow. So I um, always start in ZBrush because it's just, you know, for me, it's way easier to, to get like an organic looking um, character like sculpted in ZBrush rather than trying to, you know, model it in cinema. Um, so I will just start with a sculpt and mm -hmm. then retopologize it. And then I bring it into cinema for rigging and UV unwrapping. And then I'll take it into Substance Painter. Uh, well, then like I have my, my low poly, my, my rigged low poly version of the character. And I'll take the high polygon sculpt that I did previously and I'll bake the um, all the details that I did on the sculpt and that was lost during the like scaling down to the re, uh, to the low poly now version, is this is this that via again. a normal map is this oh uh, yeah exactly it's normal baking yep mm -hmm. like like you have essentially you have two identical versions of the same model like a, a very low polygon model that is good for animation and it has good topology to like bend at the at the right uh, places um, and then you have a very high polygon object with a lot of detail that it's like really unusable for, for any sort of animation. And then you kind of project all of that detail onto the low poly version. And then all those details, they exist in the um, texture uh, maps. Um, so you get a lot of that detail back, but without actually adding any more um, um, geometry to it. Yeah, so like, I mean, I, I know they do this in, in video games a lot because they need as much mm -hmm. performance as possible, right? So exactly. Yeah, I just started learning this technique with uh, with photo scans in reality capture, because you know those photo scans, man, there's like millions and millions and millions, yeah. hundreds of millions of uh, of of triangles, um, and you got to try and bake that down into a usable. You don't want to blow up your program when you bring it in. So, all right, that's that's cool. I'm that's cool that you touched on that. But yeah, please keep going. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested in this process here. Yeah, and so then I have my, uh, my, my my model in Substance Painter, then I do the texturing there, export my texture maps back into Cinema, um, and then I'll build my shader and Redshift, and then it's just applying and rendering. And then I got have my character. So this was step one for you? Yeah, that was like the first day. Dang, man, you're so efficient. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, the thing is, I, I kind of started a bit late into the challenge. It was already, already like the second week when I heard about it. Um, second so week? I, I, Shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, man. Um, I can't believe it. Wow. Like you started 
3D two years ago and you had half the time with this art. Yeah. Wow, man, crushing it. Yeah, All right, continue, continue. I'm so excited about this. Yeah, like the, the problem was that I, like, I, I had this concept in my head, but you know, then I looked at the calendar and was like, oh shit, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do this. So I, I just put it away for two days and did nothing then. Yeah. Um, and and then I then I kind of got angry at myself and said, OK, now you got to try. And then I kind of post this mini challenge to myself. So I said, if, if you can do like this one character, um, like within a day from concept to final animation, then I'm going to try and go ahead with the actual challenge. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I did that in one day. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. I think that's a great thing for people to, to maybe try out. Like if, you know, if you look at the full picture, you might get overwhelmed, but if you break it down into little parts and, and yeah, say, exactly. you know, if I can do this little piece, then I can keep going. And I know, like I, I learned recently I have ADHD and I'm just like, my motor is constantly running and I'm like always working on stuff and I'll get distracted sometimes. And well, a lot of the times. And, but one of the things I learned with ADHD was that it's difficult for us to start a process. Like there's just procrastination with starting something. And that is the hardest part. So if you can start it, if you can just kickstart it just enough, then you'll be there to finish it out. So I think that's a really yeah. cool piece of advice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like break it into small chunks. So, you know, and, and kind of try to, to sketch like your timeline out and, and um, do one thing at a time um, so you don't get lost in it like do like the character on the first day or like two days or i don't know and then you do like asset x then and asset asset uh, y then and um, you know like try to like keep like make a list so what's your next slowly chunk? work it off where do you go from here uh, so, so my next chunk was the actual main character because like this was just like secondary character yeah um and i didn't quite know what my actual main character was going to be at that point because i was thinking okay this might be like a humanoid or something um but you know making this little blobby thing takes like a day and making an actual humanoid character takes like a lot longer than that and i didn't have the time anymore and um, so i was thinking um how I'm, how i might be able to like cut a corner there and i was thinking okay maybe i can make it out of something that i've already made but i've only really made this character so, so i was thinking so maybe i can make the character out of the character i just made how would that look and like my first impulse was that it would like really look really weird um but then i started making like sketches and um, i was like jumping to this, this uh, like my head jumped to this visual visual joke of like the children standing on top of each other and they're yeah. trying to like act like a grown up and they're trying to <laughs> get into a bar or something and they're wearing a trench coat to yeah. like you know disguise themselves and I thought okay this this might actually be funny I could I should try that um, so yeah these these are, are like a few very rough sketches of that. Um, like I knew I wanted to have like um, the, the torso consisting of them and then like another one for the head who is like controlling um, like the rest with the arms because I also had this problem like they, the, the, the spirits they, they didn't have legs and they only had like these very stubby arms mm -hmm. um, and, but, I, but I still had to like fit them into this human like shape so I had to compensate for that somehow and that's kind of how the puppet evolved around that. Dude, so it was it's... kind of like so good out of this out of necessity uh, really so this is like a bit of um, like work in progress stuff here man so, um, that's so I, good i love it man there's like the two helpers on the bottom that's, too <laughs> that's great uh, exactly that's this kind of to suggest that um no, they, they they might have built that themselves, but they're maybe not the best craftsmen. So this might collapse at any second. So maybe <laughs> like use two more to kind of stabilize it so it doesn't fall over. Dude, I love that you're like, you took the one step to making the, the first character and then you're like, okay, I did it. Now I have to like make a whole other big character, but I don't have time. So how the heck am I going to do that? Well, I'll make it from tiny. I'll make it from like, a mix of the character I just made. And dude, it's such a cool, unique character that you put together. Like, how, how about these masks? Like, where did the masks come into play? Mm, 
so I knew I wanted to have uh, like an audience of those, um, but I didn't want, um, you know, I, I only wanted to make one character, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I, but I wanted them to look like different from each other. So I had to introduce variety somehow there. Um, so I thought these, these masks might be like the best way to introduce variety pretty quickly without too much um, like effort here. So obviously they have different colors, um, like different body colors, mm -hmm. um, but like the masks, here's like another render. Oh, so, dude, um, yes. <laughs> Yes. So I made like uh, a couple of different mask shapes. It's like just four different shapes in total. Um, and then I just combined with different accessories, like different horns and different leaves and feathers. And these, these, these are just like, like small variations of the, like, you know, basically the same thing, but then like recombined differently each time. And then you get like kind of a huge variety of that. Yeah. Um, and then that's combined with different textures on top um, to, to give it even more, even more variety. So, and maybe something interesting there, like for the textures, um, what I did was, so this is my Redshift shader graph for the actual textures. So what I did here was to funnel them through a shader switch node. And then I linked that to an object ID tag and what that enabled me to do was um, to like, um, because later I would have this huge crowd and um, it would be like really annoying if I was like, okay, I want this guy right there on the right. I don't want him to be red. I want him to be green because I don't like the red there. So to make like it, it easier to art direct that, um, I linked it to the ID tag. So what I could do now was just to, switch, to, to change this number here, uh, which each character had. And then the, uh, it's happening soon and then the texture would change awesome all right so you build out a system like a random yeah. seed thing but it still gives you control so if you do yeah, want this specific one to be a certain look you could just set it to that yeah dang exactly right dude that's awesome did you know how to build that system before the challenge you have to learn that for the challenge uh, I did something similar before where it's just completely random based and I tried to make it random based, but somehow it wouldn't work. And so this was just a happy accident where it did like more what I wanted it to do. Um, but it was actually the only thing that actually worked in that, I don't know, it was kind of a bug. So, but yeah, I, I kind of knew it. So at this point, right, you have your main character, you have yeah. your audience with their different masks. What's the next point? So the next point uh, was to actually think about um, how the environment would look like. Yeah. Um, uh, so um, I did like, I started with a rough block out uh, in cinema. That's just like, just a bunch of cubes. I knew I wanted to have this kind of like auditorium and uh, like the stage area here. Mm -hmm. um, but I really did nothing more here at that point and then i just rendered that out and threw it into photoshop and did a brilliant sketch on top that's like all you this need. beautiful right yeah <laughs> yeah exactly that's all you need took like i don't know like 10 minutes or so um it's actually it, it's more like like a mental note for for myself um, so i know what it means nobody else has to really uh, be able to understand it because i would be the only one who's working on it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so yeah, that's that's kind of like my my reference um, from what I worked um, off then, um, and then I just you know started making a list of all the assets I had to I had to create, and I worked that off in the um, following days. So, your trees, did you make those yourself or were those assets? Uh, I made all the assets myself except for like a few leaf textures that i took from substance source yeah um can you show your final render or soto can you uh, switch yeah. over to me real quick yeah so dude the more i look at the scene I, i'm just blown away um everything is designed perfectly to fit 
within this world. Um, everything feels like it it's, belongs. It's all kind of soft. There's no hard, sharp edges. Um, like I would kill to play this game, dude. Uh, I love. Okay, so one thing I one thing I really dig. If you look on the left, up in the trees, you have those banners that are floating yep. in the wind like this. Um, you also have what looks like to be like dried like mushrooms drying in the tree or something like that up top and like um you have yeah, this beautiful yeah, like, like wind thing coming too like it's very subtle but it's these little streaks of wind that come across of course we have some butterflies y'all you, mm -hmm. you have some wind particles and you have some leaves in the air can you talk a little bit about like the wind and how you captured that look okay yeah so um i can maybe show some things yeah so the um do you see my screen again yeah yeah we got you okay so um let me jump into after effects here uh where is it so um let me just scroll through here maybe oh you have volumetric light too that's like subtly animated uh yeah Whew. all do. right man go for it what you got i'm excited um so yeah i wanted like like i wanted to have all this tiny movement everywhere um so i i threw some dis displacement on all of the leaves in the scene like all the ferns are like slowly um, swaying in the wind let me just play this here wait you did that in after effects uh no 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 that's that's like all of that is uh, done in cinema okay got it um, um but yeah, so the particles here, that are actually X particles um, that are rendered out separately and then composited on top here in After Effects. Wow, okay. Um, the, um, all of these uh, little banners here and the flags, they were simulated in Marvelous Designer. Mm. And like the long um, like banners here. These, well, on the right side? Like to the trees. Yeah. Yeah, on the right and, and on the left and these here. Um, those are actually just um, splines um, in, in cinema. And then uh, like um, I wrapped some geometry uh, around those. And like, uh, I think it's just a bit of turbulence. Rope dynamics? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Amazing. Are you in uh, R26, S26? Uh, R26, yeah. Yeah, they got that new rope dynamics that are like super cool i was using them for my thing as well but that's that's for yeah. great and then the flag on the right yeah. is that just cloth sim uh the, the the flags they're all marvelous designer okay okay got you man like, uh, colors think, dude Oof. yeah and uh the actual uh, like the these these tiny wind uh, uh effects streaks here. yeah how'd you get that yeah. oh that is just uh added on top and after effects that's Oh man, this is a mess here. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wind here. So um, that's just basically like um, this one stroke effect that's drawn on. And then that is like multiplied a couple of times. And uh, then I put some blur on it. Dude. And then that's comped on top. Like there's really not much more to it. That that's it's like really the perfect way to show wind. Uh, that oh man, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to like look into doing that on uh, some of my future renders because that's a nice, very nice effect. It feels it feels like you want it to look like in like Ghibli movies or like yeah. a Breath of the Wild or something. Yeah, mm. that was kind of the intent. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Shoot. Um, and then the leaves and everything, that's X particles? Um, these these small leaves floating here, yeah. yeah, that's X particles. Awesome. And like there's about, actually yeah. some there's actually some particular on top, like very, very like uh, tiny dust particles here, but you actually can't really see them in the final render anymore. Like there's too much grain on top, they get lost. How did you do the individual like leaf wind up top? Is that also just displacement noise? Um, let me think. Yeah, I think I think it was. Uh, let me see if it's in here. Like that's my tree. Speed tree? Uh, no, that's a tail. Insidium tail. Hmm. You know it? Like the guys who make X particles, they released this new tool uh, in in spring. 
oh. uh, which uh, lets you like uh, create awesome foliage uh, oh, really quickly. Oh, sick! Yeah, that's awesome. And um, I, I did the trees with that, and then I exported them to ZBrush and uh, like uh, reworked them. Um, but I took the leaves. Like I used the leaves that mm -hmm. I provided here. Mm -hmm. um, I'll see them like this. That makes so much sense. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so I can't find it right here, but oh no, here it is. Yeah, it's just a displacer, and then there's like uh, a noise texture, and this, um, like it's an it's an animated noise in a displacer uh, deformer on the leaves. So, does like that effect. Does it play in the viewport? It does. Bang. That's great. All right, so. You know, we're, we probably have a couple more minutes here. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that you want to say or any advice you want to give to artists um, who are just getting started or maybe who, uh, who feel stuck? Mm -hmm. Like what, what, what do you do when you feel stuck? Do you, yeah, I mean, I'll just say that. Um, when I feel stuck, <laughs> um, that's a tough one. Um, I think like, like keep in mind that, that everybody is feeling like that at some point, like, um, it's not the end of the world. If stuff doesn't work out as you, you know, you want it to. Uh, immediately but you know keep at it um, I, I often have this moment like when I'm working on a scene like there's always a time where everything looks like crap um, mm -hmm. where you look at it and you think this doesn't work but it often is like that it doesn't work yet and you kind of there's like often this moment where you just have to push through um, and stuff and and eventually you will get to a point where um where it improves um and 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 you will get to a point where you are more satisfied um with the stuff you're working on um and also if you like if you're interested in you know in getting to, in getting getting into this like do it and and don't don't be like me and say for years like okay i'm gonna do it eventually um just you know just just try to make the time and actually jump into it um, and also like try to connect to other people and other artists online um, because that's something that i haven't done uh, as well for like a long time i've just been doing stuff for myself and like keeping it all to myself and not sharing anything um, but the moment you like get yourself like get your stuff out there and and share it with other people and um you know get get feedback um you you will grow and the community is like really awesome and it's, it's very encouraging so yeah man that okay Abs yeah yeah absolutely absolutely i think finding that community and finding that support is crucial um mm -hmm. you know it, it's kind of one of the the after effects of you know me starting the discord because you like the discord was for the weekly challenges just to you know so other people can join in on these challenges that i was doing on the stream um but it turned into this massive community of people who are like wanting to help each other out and i think without the community it's definitely harder way harder to create <laughs> um but you know, to also touch on what you were saying too like I think it's really important if you want to do something to just go for it. And I know that it might be hard to dive into something that you don't know how to get started in. So the hardest part is always starting for, for me yeah. personally. You know, I think like it's when you're going to be your worst, but it's so important to start to start because, you know, you're never going to freaking win a challenge like you just did if you didn't start right so and 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 also to touch on what you're saying about your art looking bad for a long time like yes that will happen you will get 
it, it will be a thing. Even even like when you got it figured out and you feel confident in, you know, your art, there's gonna be times where it just doesn't look good. And I, I can say just from experience that that's the case every time I create something. It, it yep. never looks good for like a while. And then not until like the last moments does it really start coming together. And you just have to trust that that time will come. And the more experience you have, the faster that time will come. But yep. yeah, there's always a period where you're just like kind of down on yourself and like, cause your art doesn't look good. But yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any reason to be down on yourself. I think you just gotta, the more you do it, you just trust in the process and you know, you'll get there. But um, yeah, Christian, any, any final words? Oh, real quick. Sorry, by the way, if you guys want to follow uh, Chris, his link is down below in the description. Um, we're linking to, what do you send your YouTube, your Instagram, our station? I forget. I think in the description, that's my YouTube. It's, um, I think I only got like 12 subscribers and, and two videos on it, uh, but there's like links to my art station, Instagram as well, where it's like, I got a lot more stuff on there. From your YouTube, know. they can find that from the YouTube. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah. So go, go check them out guys. Uh, fantastic artist. Chris, I can't wait to see what you do on the next one. And thank you so, so much for, for joining us. Thank you for putting in all this effort in August and crushing this challenge and for joining us and giving us all that great info, man. I'm, I'm definitely going to look back on this, this stream and lots of little nuggets of info, man. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right, man. We'll catch you soon. All right. All right. Bye bye. Later, man. Peace. Who on earth is this? This, Mr. Andras X. What? What's the X? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Oh, can't hear you. Yeah, the X is. Uh, uh, so does so... Okay. Oh, I'm here. I hear it. I, I can't, I can't One hear moment, you. y'all getting this figured out behind the scenes. So Demonte's on the case. <clears throat> All good guys. Do you, he, do you hear me? Do you I hear can me? hear you, but I can hear myself. Okay. Okay. I think this works. Can you hear me, Andres? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, All right. Yes. All right. This. I think this will work. It's a little like you know, a little workaround, but we're we're getting there. Um, okay. Soto, can you check your screen share on Discord? Let's see. I want to make sure I can see what's going on here. There we go. I don't know. There we go. Yep. Yep. I can see that. Thank you, chat. Thanks for bearing with us. Yeah. I see a white screen Soto. There it is. We're good. Back to the white screen. <laughs> It's good now. All right. Andres, are you alive? Yes, I'm here. I can hear you. It's all set. Sweet. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Okay. So uh, you were asking about my name, I think. Uh, can you hear me? Because I can't yeah. hear anything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 laggy. I can hear you. Yeah, it is a little yes. laggy. Yeah, okay. So my name, my real name is Chonto, which is um, in Hungarian, the CH is um, CS, which is an X in English. So it's hard to pronounce in English. So I just use an X to everybody to be able to uh, pronounce my name. So it sounds super cool. 
X, yeah. <laughs> um, so, for those of you who don't know, Andres won first place in the Moving Meditations 3D Challenge. And, dude, your art is freaking so cool, man. I love everything about this. The way that you're using the mocap data to alter, you know, and to manipulate these scientists and this room that you built out, the, you have a lighting shift that goes down. The thing looks photo real. You're doing a lot of cool dynamics here, um, like uh, some destruction on the right with the tile and everything. The flickering lights up top are incredible. Your cloth simulations, you're firing on all cylinders here. So I want to break this down with you. Starting with, first off, where are you from? I'm from Hungary, which is kind of like Eastern Central Europe from Budapest. That's the capital. Yeah, and I'm from here. Yeah. Where did you, how did you get started in 3D? What was the first thing that you were like, oh, I got to do this? 3D, I, at first I was shown this at school. I was um, in high school, I was uh, attending an art high school and I uh, learned animation there. And there were, they were uh, teaching us uh, 3DS Max, but I didn't like that software that much. And uh, I never really touched 3D since uh, until uh, 2017. Yeah. Or okay, 15. so you've been about for five years, five plus years or yes, so. Yes, yes. But I uh, was uh, working in uh, animation, in 2D animation, and uh, yeah. Nice. Okay. So, you know, when you hear, about, you're in Blender, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Blender. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. Very, very cool. Um, so when you heard about this challenge in August, how, like, where was your mind at? Were you thinking about this idea specifically or was it something completely different? How did you get to the point where you're like, this is the idea I want to aim for? Yeah, it was uh, kind of uh, by chance, I can say that. Uh, there was this uh, uh, fanzine magazine or something which we were making with my friends about UFOs and aliens and uh, I was doing characters for that. And then the challenge came and I had this uh, UFO character, this alien character. And then just uh, uh, the first thing in my mind was I want to use that character. And uh, then uh, things started flowing in from different directions. So my girlfriend was watching uh, Stranger Things at the time, and that was uh, obviously an inspiration, and yeah, kind of like that. I mean, yeah, totally. I see it. So that's it's cool, man. Like you started with a character in mind, and the Stranger Things too. I just finished season four, which is so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, um, actually, sorry, actually, real quick, yeah, this, this, Soto. Yeah. One moment, sorry, we're doing this back, this like work around for the audio. So can you turn down the music a touch? Or just turn it off for like monitoring, maybe. Thanks dude, perfect. Um, so yeah, I mean, I get, I get the Stranger Things vibe from this, definitely. So it seems like you had a perfect mix of ideas come together um starting with the character and yeah it's it was, a great it was, way to have some solid direction yeah at first i just thought this is an alien guy he could do magic levitate things and just what if he, he just uh, levitates some trash or something in an alleyway but um, soon i dropped that idea and uh, it came to my mind this Vecna things when he uh, just ruins people, and from that, from uh, then it just flowed in this direction. Yeah, that's such a beautiful process when like you can get that 
ideas coming together and have a direction and know exactly what you're going to do and you just knock it out from day one. Um, uh, amazing. You were blessed with a great idea early on, it seems. Yes, yes. Actually, I, so, I started... Sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. I can say. Yeah. Uh, actually, I started the whole process um, two weeks in August. So go. in the last... Yeah, I started it, I think, the, the third week or the second week. Oh my God, man. If you didn't have that like perfect combination of idea and character, then this wouldn't have happened. Yes, yes, <laughs> I, I think so, yeah. How stressed out were you? Like when you were making this art, it's really tough to create. It's like, hey, make the best thing you've ever made and do it in this short amount of time and it better be good. Like, yeah. were you stressed out during this process? Actually, I was doing some other work and I fractured my wrist, so I had to work uh, like uh, this, I couldn't use my uh, left thumb, which is crucial for keyword comments. And some, so it was a bit tough. Yeah, I can say that. Dude, you were. <laughs> it's like the world tried to hold you back, but you were like, "No, nah, I'm gonna get first yes. place." <laughs> yeah, oh my I was, god! I was. Uh, I couldn't believe it at first. <laughs> you know. Wow. All right, so let's get into this art, man. Tell me about this process. How do you begin uh, putting this scene together? Yeah, um, I'm gonna show you, I don't know, the blend file maybe. Yeah, it's here. So at first I, I had this, oh, let's go with pictures. Sorry, I'm in it. Oh, you're good. We got time. So I sculpted this alien character. <laughs> Dang, it's so sexy. And, yeah, yeah, he was made in, in an iPad and this app called what? Nomad Sculpt. Yeah, uh, I generally uh, sculpt in an iPad. And What's the it program? Handle, it's, it's called Nomad Sculpt. Nomad. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, it can handle around 20 million vertices, I think. So it's pretty decent. It's capable of pretty high quality scalps. So yes, and, oh, it's the final character. And then I um, wait. Hold on. Let's see that again. Go back to the character. Go go back to that character. Let me see okay, that video okay. real quick. That's nice. Yeah, I made this. Just isolated the character for the. Is this marvelous designer with the cloth? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was made in the program. Oh, so good! I love that you can see through it. Yeah, and also it's something. Also, the tubing uh, in his arm is also made in marvelous, just Amazing. with a glass material or something. So okay, okay. So you started with the character. You started with the cloth you kind of locked your character in, you picked the animation that you knew would kind of alter the environment with that like slam, right? Yes, yes. Uh, for, for the Picking the animation was um, I almost instantly knew I wanted uh, number 18 because that was this uh, impact in it and I very much liked that. So it was uh, an easy choice. So yes, and the, what's next, environment or the scientists? No, actually I was uh, retargeting the uh, animation and tweaking the um, tweaking the animation because there was a lot of clipping because mm -hmm. he has uh, long limbs, long arms, long legs, so there was so much clipping. I was cleaning that up and then I think then after that I was uh, doing some basics, basic uh, environment, something like this level or a little bit less, just uh, just this basic corridor and uh, and uh, the textures. What are you using for reference on this? Are you just off the top of your head or what? Uh, I I was looking at references. Uh, Ooh, actually, yes. I use stable diffusion for that. 
mm-hmm. it's gonna stop my work, uh, my living. <laughs> it's so good. But with the alien character, it wasn't that good. So it's like this. And this. It's described an alien. Yeah, and I was also uh, looking at real pictures for the corridors and yeah a funny story uh, because i fractured my, my arm my wrist i was in the hospital many times so uh, i what? Uh, <laughs> no way. Drew, drew inspiration from there as well so actually you can see these uh, lines in my uh, animation you can see these lines in the floor <laughs> that's some crappy lines in the hospital which shows you uh, the x-ray room is where or the uh, different rooms is where at so i incorporated that photograph in <laughs> the scene oh my god that's dude that is so crazy like if you didn't break your wrist your art wouldn't be as good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah what the heck you're you're just absorbing everything around you like in these two weeks to put out the perfect piece of art i love it wow yes <laughs> And uh, yeah, so next, what's next? Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Next, I was doing the uh, so okay. The the scientist characters, yeah, yeah. They were ne- they were next. Uh, unfortunately, I lost that uh, file when when I could show you, but I was um, making make the. The, doing the rigs in uh, Mixamo, okay. and also, and I downloaded Mixamo animations, and I combined them with uh, this um, thing called nonlinear animation in Blender, where you can combine different uh, FBX uh, skeletal animations into one. And also, when the impact happens, when they slam to the wall that part and this uh, broken <laughs> every bone <laughs> uh, uh, these were custom animations which was made by me and i combined these different animations in the nla animator nla combiner in blender and uh, then you have to bake that animation to one and exported it then to Marvelous Designer. Yeah, so that yep, was the to do all the costumes and whatnot. Yeah, but that was a real pain. Uh, the orientation of the animation in Blender is looked good, but in Marvelous, uh, and I don't know why, it kept um, changing orientation. So it was a pain, and and uh, after many many hours of trial and error, I found out that there is a Mixamo plugin which can uh, generate control rig for your uh, Mixamo animations. And if I generate a control rig in Blender, then I could export it to Marvelous and then magically it works. I don't know how, but yeah, that was my workflow. I think two days was uh, spent with this thing. So I was a bit nervous. Well, I mean, it's smart that you decided to go with the character workflow next because those are the elements needed to tell the story of your scene, right? And like you easily could have gone into doing the detail of the environment, which for me would be the most fun. I I really don't enjoy doing character stuff um, and dealing with all those technical problems. But you're really smart in that like you tackled that first and foremost because that is the element needed to tell the story of your render. Yes, it's it's, it's something uh, it, that comes from my line of work. Um, usually, most of the time, I'm working at theaters in in theatrical place where there is a, um, uh, some animations in the background, and mm-hmm. sometimes the director says, "Let's change it by tomorrow." So you have to work fast, and I learn to prioritize, and I really like. Uh, messing around with little bits of the environment, that line of things. But I knew that I have 
not that much time, so I have to get through the characters, which is the most time-consuming part of the task. Do you enjoy doing the character stuff? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you there. Do you enjoy it? Do you like doing the character stuff, or do you more enjoy the environment and lighting parts? Um, I like uh, both, but uh, I very much like sculpting uh, different uh, interesting characters, but with humans and animation, not that much. So, yeah, I see. maybe yeah, I can say uh, environment is is uh, more more enjoyable for me. So, speaking of the environment here, um, two questions: How much time do you have to create the environment? Like, how much time is left for you? And then, what did you do to like detail and max out this environment? What was your process? Okay, so I was uh, doing the basics in about a day or something, the corridor, and uh, then I uh, then I just uh, moved in uh, piece by piece some downloaded assets and uh, my own photographs. And I've done this fog around the uh, scene, this uh, haze. It, it, it was fun, but it wasn't that much time. Nice, okay. And so that, like the haze and stuff, that's built in with Blender, but then you also have like yes. particles in your final render. Um, that Would that be After Effects work? Yes, that was made in After Effects. Uh, let me show so you. So we'll we'll get we'll get to like the compositing in After Effects probably a little bit more towards the end. What what else? Okay, like, okay. we'll stay in three D here. What else are you doing? Like, do you have any uh, like moments or tips and tricks on like let's say the tile breaking on the right side? Is that just very basic uh, dynamics kind of a setup, or are you doing anything special for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of a funny thing because. Um, uh, I made it, uh, <laughs> and you won't believe me, but this is keyframe animation because it's just some very basic uh, simulation. It should be, but it didn't want to work that way. And, and uh, I just you had to hand animate those tiles. Said, yeah, and I just looked at it and said, "Okay, it's just five or four uh, keyframe for each tile. It's not that much." So. I just do it that way. It's it's again. It was uh, <laughs> less time. So just, just because it was less time. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I have this habit to do everything in the least amount of time, the best with the, with the best uh, output. So <laughs> I'm just. I mean, well, that's that a good habit to have, man. I like. I I need to do a little bit more of that. I feel like I spend a lot of time on the details that aren't necessary you know because I pride myself on the details but at a certain point I have to realize that when, when it's necessary and when it's not and I think your workflow of doing the quick like going for the quickest way to get a version out and then you'll make it better if it needs to look better after that I think is the only way yeah. you were able to even make the the time limit with this yeah I'm also very much like to do little stuff and uh, lost in details but uh, but yeah, I, I have this habit to uh, get to a decent point. And if I have time, I can uh, spend years. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yes. Um, okay, so before we move on to the After Effects side of things and bringing your render to its final form, are there any little things that you want to mention or touch on when it comes to like the Blender side of things? Uh, yeah, I, I, I made this basic vertical system animation simulation for the tiles. And I also, which is, I don't know, everything, you can see everything, I think. And also there was this uh, uh, simulation with the papers, which uh, didn't make it to the final cut. But there was this version when the papers, these files, which they keep on the test subject are flying. Nice. But yeah, 
the final version, I, I didn't use that. You know, I think one thing that I love so much about your art is that the mocap data affects the environment. And I think that's a big thing that a lot of people didn't do was have their mocap data affect the environment. And I think it's so important because you're going above and beyond. It's like, it should definitely like, especially if you're picking something with ha that has an impact, it should affect the environment. Or I don't say should, it's, you know, all subjective, but you're doing such a good job of it. Um, Thanks. You know, it, it feels like a complete, a whole complete world that you put together. So you're going to render this out, right? And then you're going to bring it into After Effects and you're going to start compositing this thing. So do you have a version like before and after compositing or no? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, just a minute. So th this is the final and uh, yeah, it's after. This was the, so Blender uh, rendered this. This was the render uh, straight from Cycles. There is mm -hmm. the lights, the haze, everything, the volumetrics. And uh, this was the final compositing. It's, it's not, yeah, you can say there is a difference, of course. Um, can you do me a favor? Can you close Blender right now? Because you're coming in a little choppy on the Discord side. Okay, I closed it. All right, sweet. So you're adding, this like dust particles, which I think is a very, very, very big thing to add. Um, it does a lot and it's a very yeah. subtle thing, but you're killing it with those particles. And yeah, you got some like smoke in the background too. Is that right? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I try to make the impression if uh, there is a fire in the background in the, in another area and they are uh, escaping from the fire and the, Alien guy is also escaping from his prison. <laughs> yeah, and he caused the fire, of course. So, um, and therefore, you're doing, like, besides color correction and whatnot, are you adding any diffusion? Are you adding film grain? Are you doing, like, any other special lens kind of things in After Effects? Yes, uh, I added film grain and uh, uh, different layers of. Uh, adjustment layers and this kind of glow thing which is just a, a, a white layer messed out and in addition mode blend mode and also i made these uh, warp effects and mm. this um, uh, how you call it this rgb, RGB shift effect yeah and, okay uh, you can see it uh, better here. Yeah, so actually, as soon as the scientist's uh, feet leaves the ground, there is some uh, displacement in the whole uh, whole picture, if you can see that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah? I think but, it really makes it feel otherworldly. Yeah, and I, that was my goal. Yeah, and uh, when the impact happens, there is this, I don't know, this energy uh, warp or something like that. And it's so good, yeah, man. Your lighting like, comes together perfectly and like the way the lighting shifts and all these little subtle things you're doing come together for such a huge impact in the end. It's amazing. Yeah, the lighting was uh, pretty much, I'm pretty sure the lighting is uh, helping to sell this thing uh i used it looks so dark and sinister too well, on the red like when he when it's just backlit on the red yeah actually it's just some faking uh, there is area lights behind it which mm -hmm. make this rim light also with with the here oh. you can see it but there, there are also other light, red lights in the background, which is some kind of a alarm, alarm light. Yeah, Dude, it's so good. Yeah. It, the, the lighting, man. I think that's like the, the biggest thing with yours is the lighting. It's just incredible. 
Yeah, so, and the it's so like yeah, subtle too. Thanks. The, I made this uh, flickering almost in every light source, which was just some uh, modifiers in Blender, uh, noise modifiers with limits, right? Mm -hmm. So to everything flickers, which I think uh, helps uh, to add that uh, other otherworldly energy going on vibe. It's perfect. I, I, you know, before, before we close it out here, I want to ask you, do you have anything that you would like to say to the audience? Any words of advice that you would like to say to people who maybe didn't make it into the top 100? What would you say to them? Yes. I, I, I say to them that uh, it's kind of obvious, obvious, but never give up <laughs> and because, uh, so many times there will be setbacks and something like that, but just keep going. Never really uh, think about uh, the that you have to perform or something. Just, uh, just there is you, and you learn from everything. And if you learned from something. Uh, that's that's the biggest prize i think and agreed uh, yeah agreed i think yeah. people just need to it's like if it's about winning the prize there's only so many there's only five people who win and like yeah top 100 sure they got kit bash stuff but like at the end of the day it comes down yes, to like did you have a good time creating did you learn while you were creating like did you make yes, friends yes. along the way you know yes yes and especially uh, uh, before uh, before these challenges, before your I was doing your challenges, I never really mm, talked uh, with other people from in the industry or in the 3D scene, and uh, I learned uh, so much from the Discord, from doing weekly challenges, and from doing this. I just uh, pop my uh, work there and ask. Uh, people, if, do you have any uh, thoughts on that? And they help, so so you could learn from. I think the the most important thing is to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep the fire going. You know, everyone yes. has a desire. They get into it because it's fun. You got to keep that fun going, and that that's you know what we try to do with the Discord, with the weekly challenges, with these big challenges here. So. Um, Man, Andres, I, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations again. Big congrats for winning this whole challenge. I hope to see you on the next one. Can't wait to see what you're going to put out, man. But again, thank you. Please enjoy the rest of your evening. And uh, I really appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It was an honor, really. Really an honor. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely, man. I'll catch you soon, yeah? Yeah. All right. Peace out, man. Hi. All right, everybody. Um, so that is four out of five um, winners for this challenge. Now, there's one more artist that we need to look at. Um, and that's going to be Jihoon, who's from Korea, who goes by Anna on Discord. And uh, Jihoon put together the time lapse robot. So I want to get into a little bit of that. Uh, Jihoon's English isn't to the point where we can have a back and forth um, on Discord live with you guys right now. So what Jihoon did was he put together um, a little video breakdown with some uh, subtitles for you guys to follow along with. And um, I'm, I'm going to play it right now for you guys. It's an amazing little breakdown that he put together. Lots to learn as always. Um, so let's take a little bit here and check out Jihoon's breakdown. And when we come back, I'm gonna get into the weekly challenge. I'm gonna announce the five winners for the weekly challenge, uh, which was upgrade was the theme of the week. And I will announce the next weekly challenge. All right, so let's enjoy Jihoon's breakdown for his uh, homeless robot time-lapse. Oh, hello everyone. My name is Jihoon and 
I am Anna in Discord. I would like to thank Quintel for choosing my work. Uh, it's a pleasant surprise to get Bip's prize. Thank you so much. I made a video about how I started 3D and how I made my scene, so please enjoy the video. In 2004, I watched the video of a game called Yogurting. It may be common in these days, but 18 years ago, game animation with such energy and style was rare in Korea. I was purely shocked and soon I became interested in computer graphics. I was interested in 2D illustration, motion graphics, and 3D CG, but unfortunately, the earliest thing I lost interest in was 3D graphics, because at that time, the performance of the home computer was not good enough to 3D modeling. After losing interest, a lot of things happened. Simply, I studied math and became a small class math teacher. After a long time, in 2019, I happened to find a video of Ian Schubert. Model simple dude, great job! His workflow and optimization tricks gave me another shock and I dreamed of 3D again. I started studying the Blender, and especially for the past year and a half, I was deeply absorbed in it. I'm currently trying to figure out what I can achieve with this. I recently became interested in the AI-generated image. I saw the picture of a homeless robot in the YouTube video of Greg Alexandrov. Maybe the idea itself was common, but the way it was expressed seemed really unique. Soon, I fell in love with these images. Therefore, when I started the challenge, basically what I wanted to make is homeless robot doing something. And then, I happened to remember of a TV program I watched as a kid. The show which introduced asceticism in India. The general image of asceticism would be considered as fasting or seated meditation, but it had extreme cases. An ascetic lived with their left arm above his head in his whole life. I mean, other people might take those actions as religious or meditative purpose, but who knows their real intention? I imagined the eyes of others who did not understand what ascetics would feel. So I thought, what if a robot does an incredibly slow moving meditation? It's only about inner self, so what if no one understands? I wanted to make a scene like that. Block out is an important process, but the scene I designed was very simple, so it ended very quickly. My background only consists of ground, buildings, and billboard. What was more important in this scene was timing. I moved the box around, imagining the main characters and supporting characters to interact with, and checked what I had to make. All that remains is to solve each component one by one. Blender has a sky texture node. You can express the flow of time by adjusting its sun elevation parameter. However, there was a problem that this background only works in cycles. I had to find a way to solve this because I was planning to make it EV. I saw that if sky texture was output as an HDR image, it could be used in EV. So I animated the sky and printed it out as an open EXR image sequence. When the image sequence was loaded, sky texture is now worked on EV. I set the output resolution very low. 
The region is depressed because the sky texture is almost empty, so I thought 200 pixels was enough. And secondly, I was worried about future memory shortages. I wanted to use building models as light as possible, just like the sky. First, I took some pictures near the Seoul station. These buildings look like they could be created with the procedural texture. I made a base by using the brick texture. Then, simply modeled some details. Still, it looked bland, so I used the random block colors to make the normal direction slightly different for each window. Finally, I made a simple interior and built the inside of the building. This is how my mediocre buildings were made. I animated the clock in Blender and printed it out as an image sequence. For the same reason as before, these clocks also have tiny resolution. Even though the image is so small, with mass node, it can have sharp boundaries. Still, it looks jaggy, but let's call it stylized. To make a fake advertisement, I used a pre-stock video. Using a screen capture program, I took screen every one or two seconds, then moved to PowerPoint and add text animation. After that, I mixed clock and fake ads with mixed RGB node. Now, billboard screen is completed. I borrowed the main character from my abandoned project, which I made a model but couldn't do rig. I'm not good at human character rigging, but I could do with robot. This is because robots do not need to use armature deform. You just have to parent each part directly to the bone. I separated the joints of my character and made them like a robot and textured using the AI generated image. It may look horrible and backside is not even textured but I didn't care because only the front side will be on the screen. I used Ian Schubert's Patreon asset for the cloud and geometry nodes to control the movement of the cloud at once. First, connect the scene time node to the set position node. Secondly, put the pressure node between the two. The animation is now repeated every one second. It is important that the repeat range is 0 to 1 because block curve node can be used. If you use the block curve to assign different movement for each axis, then any motion can be produced. Finally, by using random value node as time offset, convenient animation is complete without tapping to pay attention to the timeline or graph editor. These moving people are very awkward if you observe them closely, but I chose to divert the viewer's attention rather than spend time on extra detail, because if there are people who interact with the main character, the viewers will focus on them. When I made these robots, I used the object info node. This node outputs a random value whenever the object is duplicated. Therefore, if you use it as a vector of a color lamp node, you can make the robot have different colors each time it is duplicated. I also used it for UV coordinates. This image texture seems to rust gradually from top to bottom. So I put all the UVs in the upper quarter and changed the V coordinate as the object was duplicated. This method allowed the robot to have a variety of textures. This robot is just a project mapping of AI generated image, but the head part was not good to use as it was, so 
I digged out my old Polaroid camera and 3D scanned. These three people are based on my own 3D scan models. There were several problems with using the 3D scan results as they were. First, scanning a human can easily distort the face and hands. Second, unlike robots, human character rigging is a difficult and long-lasting task. I couldn't find a solution for a few days, so I even thought about changing the workflow from Blender to Unreal Engine that could use a metahuman. But finally, the way I came up with was to use MVLab, which is a free Blender add-on. This add-on provides a fully rigged character body. So, if I remove the arm and face of the 3D scan and transplant the body of the MVLab, then I could completely bypass the rigging process. So, I modified my 3D scan models to fit the body of the MVLab, then guaranteed them to the armature, and received the MVLab body's vertex weight data by data transfer modifier. Now it becomes a fully rigged 3D scan model. To be honest, I didn't make a character animation. I just let the characters pose for each frame. My scene is 6 seconds long compression of 16 hours, so one frame means 7 to 8 minutes. So I tried to match my animation to the speed, but then they moved so fast. If you take a picture of the city every 7 minutes, then nothing will look continuous. This may be physically accurate, but it is very distracting and cannot create a meaningful story. Therefore, I decided to adjust every movement for screen time, not real time. What I did was not animating, I just posed for the characters in each frame. Actually, those frames would reach, so maybe people would not know more than that the characters are just interacting with the girl. Nevertheless, I wanted them to make some meaningful pose at each frame. I intentionally removed the motion blur of certain characters to attract the viewer's attention. Cyclist had the option to turn motion blur on and off for each object. Unfortunately, EV does not have that feature. However, there is a cheat method to do this control in EV. If the motion blur option is set to start to one frame, render engine will refer to the space between the current frame and the next frame to create a motion blur. For instance, in this screenshot, render will refer between 5th and 6th frame to render 5th frame. Therefore, by controlling between the frames, the intensity of the motion blur may be adjusted. It is generally a difficult task to do because for this purpose, keyframe must be inserted into every single frame. In my case, this was easily possible because I made their pose in every frame, so there was already a keyframe without any space. To completely remove the motion blur of a specificator, I selected the keyframes, then pressed T to set it constant. These little sparrows were made early in the project. The body was easily made, but it was difficult to implement a motion in which the wings were folded and unfolded. I just make the wings separately and animate them by repeating height and unhide. These flying papers are not a simulation, but a geometry node animation. It is difficult to fully explain the internal structure, but the basic principles are as follows. First, use a curve modifier to deform the subdivided plane. Then, rotate both the paper and the curve separately. 
Now it looked like a flying paper. These could all be implemented inside the geometry node. So all I have left to do was animate the location of the paper. I didn't do much post process like color grading in this project because all the adjustments were already made for the time lapse effect. The last thing I added was a simple film grain. For the film grain effect, I mixed the noise texture with the rendered images and finally connected the lens distortion node. I was able to finish all the work in Blender like this. And this is how I made a short but long 6 second animation. I thank Clint once again. I am very appreciative. I didn't have a social media about Blender or 3D CG because I was a math teacher until last year, but I'm going to start the Blender YouTube channel from now on. Although it's Korean, but if you don't mind, then Please see to the URL below. Thank you for watching. Oh man. So much good info. The dude is a wizard when it comes to Blender. It's like everything is so smart and it's just enough to, to cheat his way through to the final piece of art. And I saw Visual said in the comments too, like y'all are digging that. Um, Visual is saying like, if, it's the perfect example of favoring the art versus what's real. Um, and it's just freaking perfect, wow. Um, Jihoon, if you're watching this, thank you so much for putting that together. That was a really, really nice breakdown. Um, it'll be here for you guys. Definitely go check out uh, his YouTube channel that he just started. It's all in Korean. I don't know if there's English subtitles, but you know, definitely check him out. See if you can follow his stuff. It's linked below, as well as all the other artists who were on today with us. Um, yeah, super, super nice. I hope you guys got a lot out of this stream. I know you got a lot out of just that last breakdown from Jihoon alone. Um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Thank you guys for, for joining me. Thank you for learning with me, for growing with me. Um, it's a forever endeavor. All right, we are we are always on the case, always trying to learn and grow and have fun together. So that's it. That's that's the five, the top five for you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. What we're gonna get into now, uh, before we wrap it out, is the weekly challenge. We got, uh, let's see, it was upgrade was the prompt for last week. We're gonna get into that and uh, see what you guys submitted. I'll show you the top five winners and then. Uh, a little bit of honorable mentions as well. And uh, then from that point, tell you guys what this week's weekly challenge is. And we'll get into maybe just a little bit of q and I'll hang out with you guys before we call it quits. So uh, without further ado, let's hop into the uh, weekly challenge review. All right. So let's get into it. Like I said, it's upgrade, right? If you guys want to do these weekly challenges, they're great ways to uh, practice your art every single week for, you know, whenever you're feeling like having fun and doing a little weekly challenge. It gets you ready for the big 3D community challenges. A lot of these people who did these and who even won these, who made top 100, they've been working on their weekly challenges on the Discord for, for some time now. So um, let's start it off with Metatrox. You're our first winner. Um, for upgrade, I love the story behind this. Um, it you know beautifully rendered, really really nicely done. Great characters, great lighting, very simple. Um, but like I said, it's the story about this one. Upgrade was the prompt, right? So on the left, what you have is a character with an old like medium format film camera, and on the right, you have the same character grown up years later. And the way you put it is we downgrade while technology upgrades. And you can see, you know, they got the Cine lens on the DSLR um, upgraded hardware there. I think it's so cool. And you portrayed this in a really cool way. You didn't have to worry about the background. It's not about the background. It's about your characters and what they're holding. So you nailed it, kept it simple. So congrats to you, Metatrox. You get 15 points to your, uh, to your role 
on the Discord server and you guys literally rank up. You There's a visual like emblem and badge that comes with these weekly challenges that you get points for by only doing these weekly challenges. Um, so congrats to you. Y'all, I uh, hope you're leveling up. Next up, we have Naz. Naz. Um, whoa. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. That's Naz. Uh, dude, freaking super sick. All right, so this one, you got story. You also have composition. You got color. You got a pretty photo reel setup going here. Really nice bend in the t-shirt there. You got a nice cloth sim going. Um, who knows if that's a brush or how you did it, but it looks great. This one's hilarious. All right, so basically the story here is you got a kidney that was removed from this character for a graphics card. And I understand, you know, give an arm and a leg for these things. But in this case, you gave a kidney. Um, I love your composition. I love that low angle shot. Your color is awesome. It's the blue and red kind of color combo which is super fun. You got a little bit of fog in here too uh, to really give the scene a bit of atmosphere. Um, and you packed it full of details. It feels very realistic. Um, it looks like you got that Matrix Unreal Engine. I think you did this in Unreal Engine is what you said. You got that Matrix scene. I, I noticed those ground wires, that keyboard, that monitor, definitely some of those Matrix assets. Um, but yeah, this is looking awesome. Really nice scene you put together. It lit very well. So congratulations to you, Naz. 15 points to you for crushing it. Next up, we got Obliv. Yes, looking like some destiny. Dude, you put this together as a combination of uh, hand modeled custom modeling and kit bashing to put this together. It's wonderfully lit, like movie quality. Your background is freaking awesome. I'm not sure if that's rendered or a photo, but man, it fits perfectly. Uh, the like warm light bouncing off of this main character's chest piece is incredible. Your detail is off the charts. It's a very simple little uh, environmental portrait of this character here. Maybe the skull needs to be a touch bigger. It looks a little small, but that makes it even creepier. Dang. <laughs> Good stuff. Very, very good stuff. 15 points to you for an incredible render. Um, beautiful color too. Mm. Gotta love it. Next up, we have our very own Visual. Congrats, Visual. I know you in the chat. Congratulations, man. This is top-notch work. This is two weeks in a row for you, I think. Um, a lot of people went with that sci-fi prompt. Um, I think... Metatrox with that camera. I think he was like the only winner, I believe, who did uh, something non-sci-fi. But visual, I think, I think you're crushing it here with this the sci-fi angle on this prompt. Um, your detail is incredible. Your character work is incredible. Uh, this is Daz you're using, and you're doing custom uh, textures in Octane and C4D. Your materials are ridiculous. Your character design is ridiculous. I love the way you think about your characters, man. So good. So, so good. Great color, too. Very simple. Good lighting. Just all around, knocking it out the park, man. Congratulations to you. 15 points. Keep it going. Keep it going. And finally, the last winner of the weekly challenge, the upgrade weekly challenge, is Zernesgal. Yes. Yes. You hand modeled all this. So good, so, so good. Your composition and your lighting are freaking perfect, man. I love it. It's so cool. Like, I feel like I can actually touch this character. The design is amazing. Your textures are awesome. I love the way you're doing like, uh, you have like a little edge. In Octane it would be a dirt node. And it will allow you to control the texture on the edges of things. If you look on the brow area, you can see that all those little lines, they have like a white kind of outline to them and it makes it feel worn and used and your texture work is great here. Really beautiful lighting. You're really bringing out the face with that orange, everything else kind of falls off to a cyan and then we have that pink, that hot pink on the background here. And all those wires too, mm, looking great. 
congratulations to you and to the rest of the top five for the upgrade weekly challenge but you know that ain't it because we got some honorable mentions to get into um so to monte i will mention some of these are video um one so we just make sure the audio doesn't explode so just keep an eye on it um but first off we got wondrous honorable mention to you wondrous this is great um this is a recreation of uh a album cover by a rapper whose name i forget i saw it when i looked it up yesterday uh when picking these winners but dude you even put together a like AI generated like rap song that came with this. It's so good. So good. You really knocked out this like remix of this album cover. Um, beautiful, beautiful work. Great lighting, great color, really solid all around. Uh, next up we have I Hagen, E Hagen. Yeah, this one's really nice. This one's super nice. This was, you said it was kit bashed. Uh, from a bunch of different assets that you put together. Um, you know, total classic upgrade uh, sci-fi kind of little scene here. I love the city in the background. Blade, very Blade Runner. Of course, we all, we all want to experience a city like this. If you're ever in Tokyo, in Shinjuku, a place called Shinjuku, kind of feels like this. Just a little bit. Shanghai as well. Shanghai feels a little bit like this too. But... I think you're digging the, uh, or I'm digging the composition you got going here. I love how she has shades too. It's like just dark as night up in here. Maybe you could um, push the foreground lighting a little bit brighter. It feels a little dim. Um, curious to, you know, where that light is coming from, like an overhead lamp or something, but. Yeah, just a little something small. Uh, next up, honorable mention, each one of you guys are getting five points here to your role on the server. We got Mandy E. Same situation. I love the colors though, but you modeled this hand by yourself, which I thought was very, very impressive. Um, it's a really cool look. You got that muscle kind of blending in to the metal. Um, I thought you did a really good job. I love this cartoony look that you have going on and these soft colors, you're killing it with these soft colors. So I wanted to shout you out there. Next up, honorable mention, we got Marcus Seam uh, with a little like food processor thing. And if you look closely, you can see each one of these pieces of food are being upgraded. And it's fun to just watch all of these take on. So the beer goes to like a martini. It's hard to see, but fruit and vegetables to go to some sort of I don't know, chicken the cube the cube goes to a donut yeah it's a nice little machine you put together i thought this was awesome uh next up honorable mention mdk i see you yes so you put together this awesome scene here my only note for you is um to to trim some of the fat like there's uh I feel like we're waiting for stuff to happen, especially at like the front end of things. But once it gets going, it's super cool. I love seeing this thing transform into a zombie compound. And of course, they're like, you know what? This is top secret, y'all. We gotta cut the feed. <laughs> so good. Shout outs to you, MDK. Next up, we got Noodle Chan. Very simple little breakdown you put together here um i believe you took concept art uh or heavily inspired by a certain artist's concept for this weapon and uh you built out each piece and slapped them together in this cool little video i just wish it was longer i think that's the only thing or if it was like an infinite loop that would be my only note but dude your color palette is off the charts the way you lit this is so good so so good um, next up, I think this is second to last. We have Swall for that honorable mention. Now, <laughs> this one, this one came close to winning. I was just like confused as to like, what the heck this was even like, what, what is going on here? You, we have kangaroo, like cyber kangaroos, like getting ready to race 
or something like or they have dumbbells like they're they're about to start working out but why are they on like nutella and peanut butter i don't know it looks photo real um and but it also looks like it was like ai generated or something weird like it's hard to tell it has a very unique look to it um but like even the little baby kangaroos in the pouch are hilarious it just this one made me laugh this one had me asking a lot of questions <laughs> um good stuff and finally we have maku with this cool little laptop transformation laptop to a pc upgrade and then back to a laptop this is like really nice this is almost like i could see this being on some sort of app like loading you know or uh we're working on your order you know kind of a thing you really did a great job with this it's very subtle or not subtle but very simple but super effective so congratulations to the winners to the honorable mentions and let's take a look here real quick and see what the new weekly challenge is for this week bear with me here let me uh get my screens and you got three screens and a bunch of different programs it looks like experiment is next let's see here now weekly challenge confirmed it's experiment so guys you have a week starting yesterday to make a render that is inspired by the prompt experiment so dig in have fun with it um it's a good way to practice your art and stay passionate and there are there's never an excuse for running out of ideas because I try and get you uh, as many ideas as possible with these weekly challenges. And it's not just me. I, I can't take credit for it. Uh, we have an awesome community. We got the patrons um, coming up with challenge prompts that they're voted on by the community. So the patrons come up with three suggestions for you on the weekly challenge. And then that goes to the entire server. Y'all can vote on which one you want. Um, so we try and keep it open to the community. Um, so that is the stream, y'all. I'm chilling with you guys for the next, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. I'm going to hop in with you. We're going to do some Q&A um, and just, just hang out. How are you guys doing? Did you guys enjoy that one? Do you have any questions for me? <sighs> it's good to be back. Oh, snap. Next week is the 100th challenge. Experiment is challenge 99. Dang, we gotta do something nice. What's up, 80 from Malaysia? What's going on? Thanks for hanging out with us here. We got 320 people chilling. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Always a good time. I hope you guys learned a lot with this one too. As soon as the stream is wrapped, I'm going to go back in and uh, add some chapters so you guys can go back and watch all these breakdowns. Um, I'll, sp I'll split it up for you. I'll make it easy to watch it again. Um, so if you guys have any questions for me, please at me here in the chat. So at Punisher, it'll allow me to kind of pinpoint which ones are questions for me and, and what isn't. Um, Sino, no, there are no Unreal users in the top five. We only got Blender and, uh, we got four Blenders, one C4D, and then I used Unreal Engine. So my breakdown, I'm going to be working on my breakdown. Um, it's going to come out in, I believe two weeks from now. I'm doing a full breakdown of my scene, how I created my scene in Unreal Engine, um, how I'm lighting, how I'm using assets, how I'm making custom texture maps, like all of it all of it. we're getting into all of it so i'm gonna do a nice little breakdown for you guys um in two weeks from now so look forward to it all right um 
Nor, you're saying, would you say that with the number of submissions increasing with every challenge, would you consider bumping up the number of renders in the winner's montage? Um, no, I don't think so. Because 10, I mean, man, okay, so top 100, that's a lot. And I would rather have the top 100 just keep getting better. The top 100, the better you guys get, the better the top 100 gets. Um, also, with custom music, it's really difficult to write a lot of music for these things. Like this last one was 10 and a half minutes worth of custom music, all written in about a month. If it goes out to 20 minutes, it just becomes impossible at that point. It becomes pricey. Like, you know, I got to pay for the music to be to be custom made. Um, I don't have plans for doing a top 200 or anything. I think we just keep it simple. Top 100. It sounds nice. And they're just going to keep getting better, the better y'all get. Um, and of course there's always going to be the all renders challenge too, but who knows in the future? Who, who knows? Um, let's see. Oh man, Albert. Okay. So a long time ago, I think you talked about making a video on file management when working with 3d. Are you still planning on making that? I think it's an incredible one to, to finish. It is a beast of, of a video. Um, I interviewed everyone from Beeple to Ian Hubert to, uh, 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 shoot. What's his name? Friggin Andre Lebrov. Thank you. So Andre Lebrov and like the people over at, uh, action VFX. Like I hit up everybody I could and asked them what their workflow was on how to manage their files and how to, work as efficiently as possible so you're not digging through stuff and wasting time yeah i really want to put that out i really do it's just such an edit there's hours of footage i have to dig through interviews and stuff um and it has to kind of be written rewritten in the edit so it's a process but yeah i think it's an important one it's an important one i'm, I'm planning to do it it'll be next year but it's on the list um, solo ghost. What am I working on currently? I'm working on the breakdown for, um, my moving meditations piece of art all in unreal engine. I'm going to be working on, um, like I mentioned to you guys, I was in Virginia for camp MoGraph. We were just chilling on the beach with 3d artists for like four to five days at a campsite. It was incredible. Um, I try and let you guys know when tickets go on sale. It's put together by the MoGraph.com guys, um, Camp MoGraph guys. And um, it's an incredible experience. Like if you if you can come down to the States for it next year, please like try to come down. It's so good, great way to meet people, great way to take a break, to learn, get inspired. It's so good. So while I was there, I was heavily inspired by a moment we would have every single uh, evening we would watch the sunset together as a whole group. So I have a render in mind that I want to create, um, I believe in Unreal Engine. It could be Cinema 4D, but that's next for me. I'm gonna create that environment. I'm excited about that. I'm also digging pretty heavily into AI. So I want to put out some AI tutorials I think would be very, very, um, beneficial to the community. Other than that, um, getting ready for a little, uh, I'm always trying to think of challenges, new challenges. And we do these big 3D community challenges once every six months, roughly two times a year, right? But I have an idea that me and the mods have been talking about trying to figure out the best way to do it. Um, I can't give you too much info now, but we are working towards putting together a new type of challenge, um, something that you could maybe work on for a little bit longer than a month and it's going to be super cool. I can't wait to see how it goes down. So yeah, working on a little bit, something like that. Uh, other than that, you know, that's kind of my year, you know, um, and then I'm going to get into next year and plans for next year and stuff. All right, going down this list here, I'm looking at these at Punishers. When do you find out the next big challenge? You find out the next big challenge when it gets dropped. That's pretty much it. If you're on the Discord server, that's the first place 
you're going to find out about the challenge. Um, same on the YouTube. If you guys aren't subscribed, definitely do so. Um, it's the best way to find out about these challenges. But being on the Discord, got you. Got you as well. Um, for the 3D weekly 3D challenge, can you submit a Photoshop based on the prompt? No, we're, we're trying to keep it to 3D only. You know, that's the focus. Let's see, let's go through. All right, Brotique, you said you recently started learning Unreal without completing Blender to its full potential. Any advice or suggestions? Well, I'd say Unreal and Blender go really well together. So I wouldn't say that it's, it, it, it's not like you started eating a meal, got halfway through and switched to the next meal. It's not like that. It's like you can always come back and like that Blender will always be there for you. It's not like you have to move on and you're done with it. Blender and Unreal go so well together, just like C4D and Unreal go so well together. Um, Cause I'll, so much of the things need to be created, so many of the assets need to be created in Blender, animated in Blender, um, you know, stuff like that. And then that comes over into Unreal Engine where you kind of compile it together, light it, and you have your real time scene. Um, so, I would say just keep learning what you find to be fun. And that's gonna take you a long way. And if you are just all about Unreal, then go with Unreal right now. You just don't wanna stifle your progress with indecision. You don't wanna stop yourself, be like, oh, what's, what should I do, what should I do, what should I do? It's like you're scrolling through Netflix for an hour and then you realize, oh, I gotta go to bed. I never figured out what to watch. Just learn something. Go, go where your heart is and then you'll be good. Blender ain't going nowhere. Let's see. Uh, Diego, have I ever animated in Maya? What do I think about it? Do I recommend it? I never have animated in Maya, but I heard the animation in Maya is like, super streamlined, very easy. A lot of R&D and time has gone into making that program awesome because it is pretty much industry standard um, when you're working at a studio is Maya. Um, from what I've heard, it does well with like having a, it supports a lot of different departments. Um, so I know DreamWorks, right? So there's a, one of the guys, Wade, Sir Wade, right? He has a YouTube channel, Sir Wade. And he taught Maya at DreamWorks. And another friend of mine, uh, Don Allen Stevenson the third, he did the same thing at, at DreamWorks, taught Maya. Um, Sir Wade has a YouTube channel. Uh, Don Allen Stevenson the third has a YouTube channel as well. Um, and I know that Sam at Rococo uses Maya a lot. Uh, for like a lot of retargeting and whatnot and animating on top of mocap data and cleaning up mocap data So it's definitely something that I'm looking to and I think at a certain point like it'll be helpful I'm just not I hadn't dug in yet Soto you want a recommendation on a random non VFX YouTube channel? Hmm Shoot well, I think I gotta go to my like subscriptions here and see, see what we're dealing with. Um, non VFX, God, this is a mess. Wow, YouTube needs to get their stuff together. This looks, this looks rough. Hmm, Drumio, I'm I, I love drums so. Drumio is a great place to go if you're trying to like learn how to play drums. Oh, Adam Leal, all right, for cooking. This dude, woo, he's one of the best. He's like the chillest dude 
I've ever seen on YouTube. Adam Leal, that's A-D-A-M-L-I-A-W. And he teaches you how to make ramen, like legit ramen. He has, it's called Ramen School. Um, and he goes into it. It's like a multi-day process to make legit ramen. He also has uh, fried rice Fridays. He has like all these traditional um, recipes. He does a lot of Japanese cuisine. So um, oyakodan, which is uh, chicken and egg together with like a, a light teriyaki sauce. He teaches you how to make your own teriyaki sauce. It's so easy. Um, and there's like onion, you chop the onion, kind of get it all going together. Um, and you got some like uh, some chicken broth. Ooh, ooh, so good, so good. Adam Leal, definitely check him out. Let's see, who else we got here? Non VFX related. Um, music, I love me some music. There's a channel, Blue Bear Flutes. I got my native flute from them. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. It teaches you how to make flutes, it teaches you how to play flutes. Um, Hard is easy. It's another channel I'm into because I love climbing and this dude does a great great job at explaining how to train for climbs um, uh, The different gear and techniques and terminology hard is easy. That's the channel Shoot Sotomonte you got a good question here, man. I'm going through all this stuff um, Olin Rogers freaking hilarious Love that dude that's about it when it comes to my subscriptions on non VFX stuff on YouTube. All right, what else do we got? Let's see, I'll do a couple more and then I'm gonna get some food, y'all. I'm actually cooking Oyakodan uh, after this. Adam Leal's recipe. All right, Monk. Do you think AI will completely cut out 3D software or any software for that matter in the next few years and everything will be done a different way? Question mark. I think AI is going to change our industry like crazy. Yes, I do. Um, I heard the best talk ever at half res in Chicago, like three weeks ago. Um, from the CEO or was the, he was the guy who made school of motion. I I'm blanking on his name right now, but he had the best talk on AI art and it was titled like MoGraph is dead. Long live MoGraph. Right. Um, and he was like, look at this AI. It's crazy. You know what it's doing? Like we're all freaking out. It's going to take our jobs. And he was actually like, no, it's not. Like it's going to empower more people to create, which is always a good thing. It's going to raise the bar globally for everybody. Um, and he also talks about too, like how we've been in situations like this, where a cheap, easy access tool comes along, where all the people who created before this tool are like, no, nah, it's not legit if you use this new tool because it's easier and more people can access it. It's not legit. You didn't have to learn how to slave over like frames and do all this animation and by hand stuff. If you don't know how to do it the you know the real way, then it doesn't count if you do it with the new way. And that happened with After Effects when After Effects came out. This is all part of his 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 talk. He was saying how like when After Effects came along, you had these artists who were using Flame, which is like a compositor, and like paid thousands of dollars for this like the suite to get the hardware. And then to get the artists, you were like so specialized. You came in and you know you composited movies and you did your thing. But when After Effects came out, it gave everyone the ability to do what these flame artists were doing. And the flame artists were like, "Oh no, our jobs, our jobs." And it just came down to the point where it's like we got into an industry that is constantly evolving and constantly growing. And if you're not evolving and growing with the industry, you're going to be left behind. And I think a friend was talking about the ILM documentary. I hadn't seen it yet, but he was saying how like there is the puppeteers, right? For the old sci-fi movies, horror movies, they would make these puppets and you know, that was their, that was their career. That was their life. 
But then when like CG came along, half of them were like, screw that. I'm not going to do it in CG. I'm going to do it the real way, the way with the puppets, the way that I know how to do it. And then the other half were like, the 3D is amazing. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get good at it because that's where the industry is going. And they just adapted with the times and they, they, yeah, they adapted with the times. They're smart. They had to adapt and grow with the technology. And those, some of those people are some of the best 3D artists nowadays, the best animators nowadays are the people from the puppet, the puppet world way back in the day um, when special effects were huge, you know, back in the 80s, 70s, 80s. Um, and like, it just comes down to adapting with what we got. So now we have AI, right? Is AI putting all of us out of place. And I think it just comes down to learning the software, getting good at it. You can be better. It's not just typing a prompt, like you can get better at getting better images. So what, oh man, I really wish I remembered his name. It's the guy who started School of Motion. That's the guy who was, was, was given this, uh, this presentation. And he was saying like, now anyone can make the image, like the work to produce an image or even a video now, because AI is doing video, it's easier. So what becomes valuable is the idea. How good is your idea? And it comes down to that. So you just gotta get good. Just get good, get good. That's what it comes down to, it is understanding that we got into an industry that is constantly evolving and upgrading and it's gonna get faster and faster. And if you wanna, you know, be a part of this, you're gonna have to upgrade your toolkit. And AI is an undeniable part of the toolkit now. So I'm looking forward to ways to use AI and ways to implement it. And I wanna do some videos on it. Um, I wanna do some streams with AI. I wanna really get into it. After that presentation that I heard at Half Res in Chicago, which by the way, come down next year. I, this was my first time there, it was awesome. I wanna try and be there next year as well. Um, it's a one night meetup with, you know, with presentations, um, games, like it's at, a, it's at a bar in Chicago, amazing. And uh, I, I was like, man, this presentation changed my outlook on AI. I was pretty nervous about it. I didn't feel good about it. I was kind of staying away from it. I'm like not taking it too seriously. I get scared. Like part of me is scared when like the industry is moving on without me. And I have this like guilty, scared feeling like the less, cause I know I need, I'm procrastinating. I know I need to get into AI. I just know it. And I'm lucky to have friends around me who are like at the top right now, the top of AI right now. Corridor put out an awesome video. Like go check out that video. Corridor crew is their last video on AI. Amazing. Um, so I gotta get good. I gotta step up. I can't be afraid of it. I gotta dive in. So that would be my suggestion to you guys is get into it. Do your research, have fun with it. Oh, and with that, guys, I think I'm gonna call it. I gotta make this Oyakodon. Adam Leal, check out his YouTube channel, L-I-A-W. Adam Leal, check out his Oyakodon recipe. It's delicious. It's gonna be making over the next couple hours. But y'all, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Sotomonte, for hooking up the live stream, getting all of our guests working. Um, and uh, thank you to our guests. Thank you to you guys for joining me. Thank you to everybody. Thank yous for everybody. <laughs> all right y'all um i think that's about it have a good one i'll see you uh two weeks from now all right two weeks from now we're back to regularly re regular regularly scheduled programming it's a video every two weeks all right so i'm doing that art breakdown for my moving meditations piece of art all in unreal engine i'll see you guys soon have a good one later Peace.